Yeah. First of all, we believe the Quran is the word of God. It's the word of Allah. <clears throat> and it's the speech of Allah, right? Yeah. So that takes precedence. Then we follow the teachings of the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him. So where can we find his teachings? We can find his teachings called the Hadith. Hadith is like a uh, documentation of the sayings, the actions of the Prophet. So we should follow him. Because when we obey the messenger, we also obey God. Why? Because he is receiving the message from God. Then the next, uh, the next method is we then follow the, 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 the path of the companions. Why? Because they understood the religion better than us. Why? Because they were at the time with the Prophet. They learned from the Prophet how to worship God, you know, the religious teachings. So we, we have this methodology um, that we have to stick to it. So anyone who deviates from that methodology uh, is misguided. In fact, the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, in his farewell sermon, Farewell sermon meaning that it was his last sermon before he passed away. He said that if you hold on to these two things, you will never be misguided, which is the Quran, which we believe to, to be the word of Allah, and my sunnah. My sunnah means my teachings, my way, my tradition. So as long as you follow these two, then you'll not, you'll not be misguided. But any Muslim who deviates from these two, they will be misguided. But, but, the imam, but the Imam is there to teach people about Islam. But I would assume right. yeah. there's disagreements about... Uh, because I know there are yeah. Sunnis and... I see. Shi like there are disagreements about yeah. the Quran and the, the other book that I see. Uh, and, the, and the Hadith. The Hadith? Yeah, uh, Hadith, yeah. So yeah. there's different faiths or diff no, different... Different, different, uh, di different sects, yeah. Yeah, yeah, the, yeah, about these two yeah. Uh, foundations. Yeah, but so, you know what? But the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, he prophesied that this will happen. He said that uh, yeah. he said that a time will come when my ummah, my community, will be split into seventy-three sects. But the safe sect is the one who follows the Quran and my teachings. So there's no doubt at all that there are, you know, there are, uh, you know, some Muslims they do follow, uh, you know, they have Shia, the Sunni, right? Yeah. But that's everything. Like for example, um, liberalism. Right, liberalism, for example, yeah. yeah. Everyone, so someone, somebody called themselves a liberalist, right? But even within liberalism, yeah, there's a lot of there's a lot of yeah. different interpretations, yeah, right? Indeed. So, because from John Locke, he has a, a, a different understanding liberalism from a neoliberalist, right? Mm -hmm. But the discussion here right now is all the sects, you know, Shia, Sunni, right? They believe that the, the, in terms of the creed. Uh, in terms of the um, the oneness of God, in terms of the Quran, we believe in the same Quran. We don't have different versions. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So the Shia reads the same Quran yeah. to the Sunni. Yeah. But when but their interpretation is different. Yeah, interpretation is different. Yeah. But however, uh, uh, yeah, the understanding is different. However, we go by the same text, the same book. Do you understand? So you, those two would be. Uh, Good believers, and the, because they rest on their the foundation of the Quran and the and the Hadith. Yeah. So, so with the with the Shia, they have different Hadith collections uh, from a Sunni, right? But however, so it's not the same foundation. Then. Uh, uh, so, in terms of the foundation, in terms of saying La ilaha illallah, like there's none worthy to be worshipped except Allah. Sunni Shia, we say that we believe in the same Quran. We don't have yeah, a different yeah, version yeah, of the yeah. Quran. Right? However, the understanding is different. Yeah. Yeah. But what I'm what I'm trying to get back to is look, I'm not here to say that there are there are no different interpretations. Of course there are. Yeah. But however, what I'm what, what I've explained to you is I've explained to you how we should understand methodology. Why? Because the Quran says, the Quran says that if you defer on anything, if you disagree over anything, refer back to Allah and His Messenger and those who are in authority. So if a Sunni and Shia dispute, who do I go back to? I'll go back to Allah. I'll go back to the Quran first and foremost. Mm -hmm. Then I'll go to the but teachings of the Prophet. So if, I read, if yeah. I read the Quran, I would assume there's different interpretation of the Quran. It's not, it's not different interpretation according to who's understanding. So we should go according to the understanding of uh, uh, the, the Messenger of Allah, peace be upon him, his companions, and the first three generations. But what happened is there are other Muslims. They go by different understanding. Yeah. You understand? But however, the Quran even gives us instruction that if you disagree about anything, refer back to Allah and His Messenger. That's something that Sunni and Shia cannot disagree with. Okay. See, so we always have to go back to the Quran. So, you know, I, I, I'm a Sunni. I'm a Sunni. Okay. I disagree with the Shia yeah. because the Shia they uh, they're not following the correct methodology, like I explained to you, how it should be. What? Are, in what way are not are they not 
following the correct methodology? Because they're not following the way how it should be followed, according to... What, so, for example, they they're not following the path of the companions. Because the Prophet said the best generation is my generation, then the next generation, the next generation. But the Shia, they say, no, we, we, we don't accept uh, from the sayings of the companions unless the companions are blood-related to the Prophet. And this is not found in, in the Qur'an. Okay. Yeah? So when we speak with the Shia, the only common denominator that we have is the Qur'an. And even when you read the Quran, it doesn't mention that, you know, uh, it doesn't mention that we should curse the companions and all that. This is what Shias do. But the thing is, what I'm trying to say to you is this, that the foundation of Islam is the oneness of God. That's that, that Shias and Sunni, they, they accept that. That is the creed. The foundation is to accept that there is only one God and that we don't associate partners with him. That's it. So, you said that the definition of God. I'm giving you the definition of God according to the Quran. So there's a there's a, there's a small chapter, from Surah Al Ikhlas, 112 chapter of the Quran, which every Muslim actually memorized. By the way, I've even memorized. Everyone memorized. He says, "Qul huwa Allahu ahad." Say, "He is Allah, one and only, one and unique." Allahu Samad. Allah, the one on, upon whom everyone depends, independent, self-sufficient. Lam yalid wa lam yulad. He begets not nor is he begotten, meaning he doesn't father, he doesn't have a wife, he doesn't have children, and he wasn't born. Mm -hmm. Yeah, he, he, he has no beginning so or end. The what? Yeah. God of Islam uh, uh, is radically different from Christianity. Yes, yeah. yes. And it, it, it kind of defines in kind of opposition. Correct. Yeah. Correct. And the God of Christianity. Yes, yes, absolutely. But why? that's the reason why we call Christians to worship the God whom Jesus worshipped because we also believe in Jesus but we believe that Jesus yeah. was one of the mightiest messengers of God he was, he was a messiah he was born miraculously but he, by, God. but he was not God and he's not son of God he's, what? he's not son of God and he's, and he's not God yeah. but he's a prophet the messenger of God and the okay. messiah so anything so we should worship the creator instead of worshiping the creation Jesus is the creation of God so who should we worship should we worship the creator or should we worship the creation Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, of course, the creator, but... Uh, Worship the creator, um, yeah. So you're, when you're having these conversations, you're, you're saying that you've got the right understanding of God and they've got the wrong interpretation of God, so you're trying to convert them to your belief in God? Yeah, but the thing is, what, uh, with all due respect, what I'm, what, I'm trying, what I'm trying to say to you is that you're not a Muslim right now. No, I'm you're not. not a Muslim right now. No. So for you to then argue, you know, it's Shia and Sunni, the thing is, it doesn't really apply to you, but it applies to a Muslim. Yeah. If I speak to a Muslim and they ask me questions, yeah, Sunni, I can understand that. Like, for example, I'm not even a liberalist. So does it make sense that I query a liberalist? Well, uh, what, you know, why is your liber liberalism wrong? No, because I'm putting forth a proposition that I believe that I'm right. Repeat that. Okay, so liberalism, yeah. someone who, so, so I'm not a liberalist, yeah. but if I was to speak to a liberalist yeah. and I asked him, well, there's different types of liberalism, so yeah. how do I know which one's right and wrong? Why would he represent a type of liberalism that he doesn't subscribe to? He will only subscribe to what he believes. So I'm putting forth a proposition that I believe that it's, it should be understood correctly. So I'm a Sunni. So I can only give you a, a, a Sunni understanding of, yeah. of, uh, of, of Islam. I can't give a Shia, I'm not a Shia. Well, you, you can... If you want to you speak to Shia, you can speak to Shia. Yeah, you can explain the, the, yeah. the uh, interpretation yeah. of Shia. But yeah, Shia, but, but, but I'm, not gonna, I'm not going to put forth an argument to support Shia. Yeah, I would assume so. Yeah, so I can only, I can only present to you arguments that from a Sunni perspective, because I'm a Sunni. Yeah. Yeah, I follow the Quran, I follow the, the teaching of the Prophet and the first three generations, the companions. The Shia, they say, no, you don't follow the path of the companions. You follow only those who are related to the Prophet, blood. So, so I don't agree with that. But uh, your point would be that uh, to convert Shias, Christians and atheists and whatever. It's not a question of convert. It's no? just a question of methodology. How should we understand our religion? Because even the Quran lays out how we should understand a religion. For example, if you defer over anything, refer back to Allah and his messenger yeah. and those who are in authority. So even the Quran shows us how we should understand our religion. So I can only, I can only give you, I can only represent as a Sunni. I can't represent as a Shia because yeah, yeah. I'm not Shia. Mm -hmm. But one thing that Shia and Sunni do agree is that there's only, there's one Quran. 
Yeah, yes, we don't have we don't have different yeah. versions like, for example, the Christians, the King James version, the New International version, uh, you know, the you know Revised Standard version. No, we don't have different versions. Even Sunni and Shia we read from the same book, but they, by agree with it, they have different interpretation, but we, we go by the same text. Okay. Okay. So I can only I can only represent as a Sunni. So what I say to you is that the foundation of Islam is that we accept that there is only one God and that He alone deserves to be worshipped and we shouldn't associate partners with Him. Yeah? So, the definition of God laid out... Uh, by the way, this definition that I've given to you in the Qur'an, yeah. no Sunni Shia would disagree with me. This is in the Qur'an. Okay. Say, He is Allah one and only. Allah Samad. Allah, the independent is self-sufficient. Lam yirid wa lam yulad. He doesn't father children. He doesn't have a wife. He doesn't have children. Nor was he born. There is nothing unto him. So Sunni Shia, we, we agree with that. Okay, so I would assume if I was to be a Muslim, I would have to believe in the Quran, that it is the word of God. Yeah. And I would have to Follow the, base my life on, on the, the, the teachings in this book and the hadith. And the hadith, and the, hadith. the sayings of the Prophet, the Sunnah, correct. Uh, correct. So, Oh, it's only the Sunnis who adopt this. I can only represent the Sunni. Okay, okay. okay. So, if you want to speak to Shia, you can speak to Shia. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I can only represent the Sunni. Okay. Right. Um, hmm. So does that make sense to you? That definition yeah, yeah. of God in the Quran, yeah. does that make sense to you? That there has to be a creator that possesses, that is one and only, unique, self-sufficient, independent. He doesn't have a beginning. He doesn't yeah, have children. I, I understand the, the, uh, the definition. The so do you believe in God now or you don't? I can give you another argument. I believe. Be honest, you know, don't well, be scared. I'm, don't thinking, be scared. I'm thinking about it. Yeah. One and only, sufficient. Self-sufficient, independent. So he doesn't rely on anything. He's, yeah. He exists by himself. And he doesn't need to eat or drink. And what's the other? He doesn't father. He doesn't have wife. He doesn't have children. He's not born. Whereas if you go to Christianity, they say Jesus is God. He doesn't meet the criteria of that God that we're talking about. Why? Because Jesus is born. So he doesn't meet the criteria of, of a true God. If we agree by that definition, then Christianity is out of the window then. And Judaism is out of the window. Hinduism is out of the window. I probably don't agree with the Christian God. Okay. But what about, what about, what about the concept of God in the Quran? I don't know. It doesn't feel like it's something that I would subscribe to. Why wouldn't you? <laughs> Good question. Um, I'm not here to interrogate. I'm here sorry, to learn. Yeah, I'm here yeah. to learn from you. You learn from me. Um, I'm not sure why it's relevant. But Do you God... still doubt that there is the Creator? Do you still doubt there is God? If that's the case, then that's fine. Let's roll. Let's roll with it. No problem. I can give you arguments. Do I doubt it? Yeah. At times, yeah, I could, I could, I could. Okay, so there is an argument in the Quran for the existence of God, like yourself. Yeah. Uh, it's mentioned in chapter 52, verse 35 to 36. And it goes like this I'm Khulukum in Ghayri Shayin, I'm Humul Khalikun. Or were they created from nothing? Or did they create themselves? I'm Khalakus Mawat wal Ard. Or did they create the heavens and the earth? Surely they're uncertain. So, the Quran presents an argument as for the possible explanation for the existence of the universe. The first option, it came from nothing. The option two, the universe created itself. Option three, the universe was created from something that came before. And the fourth proposition is the universe was created from a creator that always existed. So, out of these four propositions, or you can add a fifth one or a sixth one, whatever you think it is, which of these four options would you take? So it's, it's a question you're asking me? Yeah, yeah. Okay, can you repeat the options? Okay, so the, f the, first, the first proposition. I'm, I'm a bit uh, no. uh, mentally exhausted. Because oh, no problem. You're talking about mental. I, I've been here for eight hours. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. yeah. People <laughs> screaming over me, shouting me. Don't worry, man. Okay. The way we're on the same page. Don't worry. Okay. So the Quran gives an argument yeah. for the possible explanation yeah. for the existence of the universe. Yeah, and you gave me four choices. Four choices. Tell me so the first option, yeah. the universe came from nothing. Yeah. The second option, the universe created itself. Okay. The third proposition, the universe was created from something yeah. that came before. 
And the fourth proposition, the universe was created from a creator that always existed. So you ask me what, what is the, yeah. how could I know? Yeah, which of the options would you take? Otherwise, give me another possible explanation then, apart from these four. Uh, good question. Uh, I haven't thought about it, so it's okay. difficult for me to come up with an okay. answer uh, uh, no problem. From, from here, but uh, I would say I have no idea. There, there's no way for me to know which one of okay. those choices would be the right no one. Alarez. Alarez. Ah. I'm not sure, Achim, man. Do you want to come and join us later? Uh, no, I have to go to okay, Gaza. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you man. No problem. Salam alaikum, Nazim. Take care. Um, so, so uh, I, there's no way for me to know which which one is okay. the right answer. Okay, good. You're, be, you're being honest. You're being honest because even the, I, I don't yeah. believe that uh, yeah. anyone could know the okay. right answer. That, that that's absolutely fine because what I'm doing is I'm using something called deductive reasoning. So deductive reasoning basically means the process of elimination. So if we're able to eliminate certain premises, the wherever the premise is left has to be true. So you, you, you're gonna exclude the because it doesn't came something does not create from nothing. Yeah. Okay. Uh, but do, uh, is that is that is that something that we can negate that we can rule that out? Let's go by facts, not belief. Just by facts. Can can something come from nothing? Because nothing is the absence of something. Can something comes from nothing. Mm. Do you know anything that comes from nothing? I'm thinking. Um, <clears throat> not that I know of. So let's go by facts. So it's a fact that you don't know anything can well, come from nothing. The, well, but the fact that I don't know doesn't mean that it's uh, uh, that the assertion that. Uh, uh, nothing, something doesn't come from nothing, mm. since I don't have the knowledge of something that uh, doesn't come from nothing. But you can only go by what you know. So you know that something cannot well, come from but nothing. It, it comes back to the, my position, which was I cannot decide because my knowledge is very limited. I cannot exclude this possibility. I, I completely understand that. Yeah. I, I, know, I never said that we know everything. So, but, yeah, but, we have but, limited but knowledge. I, I cannot exclude this possibility that nothing, something comes from nothing okay. because my knowledge is very limited. If that's the case, yeah. nothing by definition means the absence of something. Yeah. So nothing is not even is not even a thing, let alone something. Yes. So how can nothing can come from something? Something cannot come from nothing. You can only go by limited knowledge. So that's the reason what I'm saying to you. Forget about our beliefs right now. Do we know anything that comes from nothing, from our limited knowledge? Because we've got to use that sound. Okay, I'll ask you. I'll ask you another could, yeah. question. If I was to say that I existed before my mother, yeah, I'm, I know you, you're gonna bring the. Is that like rational? A, uh, um, a seed. Uh, the, no. the, the, the tree comes from the seed. No, 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 yeah. no, 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 no. I'm making a statement right now. Yeah. I go around speaker's corner and I say, yeah. I existed before my mother, before my biological mother. What would be your reaction? Um, Is that irrational or irrational? That would be probably irrational, but why? Like, uh, can you exist before your biological mother? There are certain, there are things that we know for certainty. Probably not. No. Probably, exactly. Probably so, so my, my genes are considered from Earth. Good. Good. So, is that a rational, or irrational claim to make? What, what do you say? Is that a rational or an irrational claim? That somebody says I came before my biological mother. It would be probably irrational. I right. Would say. It's irrational. Why? Because it doesn't make sense. Because there's. Uh... It doesn't make sense. So yeah. okay. let's apply the same thing. Because what what I'm trying to do here, I'm trying to apply what we call sound intellect. Yeah. Because we human beings, we are rational and emotional beings. Correct. We're rational and emotional beings. Yeah. We have yeah. feelings, yeah, yeah. but we're also rational. Yeah. Yeah. So why do we utilize our rationality? Just so, like for example, like why don't we utilize our rationality? So for example, many, many things. yeah, so you just rationalize that you cannot exist before your biological mother. So you know for certainty you don't exist before your biological mother. So can nothing come from something? 
Can something come from nothing? Rationally, is that rational or irrational claim to make? Probably I would... See, the fact I that you're... Think, I would think that I would be inclined to believe that uh, uh, something cannot come... From nothing. From nothing. Brilliant. So we've but, ruled that out. But, well... We've ruled that out. i to think, yeah. Yeah, but, we've uh, ruled that out. So we've already ruled the first one. That something cannot come from nothing. What about the second proposition? The universe created itself. What do you think of that option? Well, there's a contradiction in it. Correct. Because you cannot exist and not exist at the same time. It's equivalent of saying that your mother gave birth to herself. So you cannot exist and not exist at the same time. So we can rule that out. What's the third option? The universe was created from something that came before. So the, what came before the something that created? So there must be something before the universe came. And that is that a third? Is that the, so? This is the third option that the universe that the Quran gives. Did they create the heavens and the earth? In other words, the universe came from something that came before. Mm -hmm. So it would be the creator that would be that would be God. But the, it poses the question that what created God? Okay, but that premise yeah. actually answers your question about this: who created God? Because if you're saying that universe was created from something, then what created that something? And then if that something created that something for this universe to exist, so it, then what did that come before? So this is what you call infinite regress. So for example, if I, if, I, if I have an infinite number of doors in front of me and I want to get into the reception, I want to get into my house. I've got my keys already, but I've got, in, I've got infinite number of doors. Mm -hmm. Can I ever get into, into my house? No. Right. So similarly, if you're saying that who created God, uh, sorry, what created something before this, before the universe came to existence, what did that something come, is equivalent of denying the existence of the universe. Because you cannot have infinite something before the universe, otherwise this universe would never exist in the first place. Mm -hmm. So that something must be eternal, always existed, and that something must have consciousness. Why? That? Consciousness, like awareness. Why? Why would it be? Why? Because this universe has a beginning, it requires an explanation. So, let me give you a, a, an example just to appreciate. This phone right here, right? Mm -hmm. Where did this phone come from? Mm, probably China, but uh, yeah. There must be manufacturer, correct? Yeah. Somebody created this. Mm -hmm. Right. So, doesn't this phone depict as a sign of a product of knowledge? A product of will and a product of power. Repeat that. So this phone, yeah. can this phone exist without the will, without knowledge, and without power? Mm. So what oh, do I mean? But you're applying yeah. the, the uh, yeah. our inten intentionality of human beings uh, about creating this phone with the universe. Yeah. So you would say. Yeah. Uh, you're right. Creator, you're right. are you not like uh, uh, taking uh, our our human life and transposing to the universe? Yeah, because we're using our rationality. Remember, we have limited knowledge, and you're right. We have limited knowledge, yeah. so we have to use this limited knowledge to come to conclusion. As, some, as simple as this phone, that you know that this phone doesn't pop from nothing. You know that this phone... So you would say yeah. that this tree came from something yeah. which was created? Yeah. Now, if you have infinite regress, this tree came from something, then that something came from that something. That thing, that you're going to have infinite regress. Mm -hmm. Like, for example, if I was to say you have infinite ancestors, would you ever exist in the first place? Or there, or there has to be a stopping point? So, no. The... I know there was probably a uh, first human to be... Right. Yeah. So, so, so how can it arise first human being from nothing? There has to be something or someone that has no beginning, mm -hmm. that originated. So that would, be, that would be your belief in God? Yes, and, correct. Okay. So now, 
can the okay for example even if the universe came from something <laughs> that something cannot bring the universe into existence unless it ha unless it's conscious because for example if it's a, a rock for example is a rock is that a conscious matter yeah but i know there's uh, the argument you just put forward, I know there's contradictions to it, but uh, it's... No it's problem. Gonna, but, but, but I don't, yeah. I don't have them in mind. But, but no uh, problem. But let's go, by, okay. let's go by what we know from our limited knowledge. What we know. Look, we know that a rock, for example, a rock. A rock is something, correct? It's not nothing. Why would you say this rock cannot create something? Hmm. Repeat that. What was okay. the question? The rock. Yeah. For example, we have a stone or a rock, right? Yeah. Why would you say this rock doesn't have the capacity to create something. This rock doesn't have the capacity? Yeah. Um, would you say a rock can create something? I would say so. How can the rock create something? Um, it can create a sound. It can create a sound if it falls. No, that's, fr that's from an external force. But I'm asking you, can the rock itself create something else? Because it's a dead matter. If it's a non-conscious, how can something non-conscious bring something conscious, like us? So this something that always existed must be self-aware. Must have the will. Because the universe could have, could have existed, could not have existed. But because the universe has a beginning, somebody must have willed, must have had the intention to bring the universe into existence. For example, this phone. Mm -hmm. This phone has a beginning, correct? No mm -hmm. doubt at all, this yeah. phone has a beginning. Yeah. So, whoever created this manufacturer must have the will. Yeah, must have willed for this phone to exist, must have the intention in the first place. Okay, so you would say God is the one willing... Correct. Yeah. Okay, and God also must possess knowledge. For example, this phone. Yeah. The manufacturer must have the knowledge to create this phone. Yeah. Because of the intricate design, uh, you know, the, the, the function of the phone, it has its purpose, right? Yeah. So similarly, if we look at the universe, it has laws, laws yeah. of physics. And you know that laws doesn't pop from nothing. Mm -hmm. There's always a lawgiver. Yeah. So that shows you the intricate design, the intricate, you know, the, the, the solar system, how it's functioning. That look at your human body. The fact that your human body is following a particular system. Yeah. Your heart is pumping. The fact that your, your, uh, when you get a cut on your arm, it heals. But if I was to ask you, I'd drop this phone. What's going to happen to the phone? We can try. <laughs> yeah, if we, I don't want to try, mate, because we know the outcome, right? I mean, this phone it is quite break. expensive, right? It so it if break. I, it'll break. Now, can the phone excel, uh, Can the phone fix itself? Can the phone fix itself? Yes. Uh, probably not. No. Probably not, right? So who can create this? How can this phone be fixed if it's broken? Probably somebody will fix it. Somebody who has the knowledge to be able to fix it. Yeah. So what about the human body, which is far more complex than the phone? When you have a cut, why does it fix? Because um, our body evolved to be able to fix itself. Because mm. we would be a poor species if uh, a small cut would make us bleed to death. But that's the system. You're talking about program. That's program. Yeah. So how can you have a program without a programmer? How can the system just come by itself? This phone is programmed, correct? It's got algorithm. You mm. can't just say, oh, the phone just programmed itself. Mm. No, somebody must have encoded. The fact that your, your single DNA, your single cell, contains more information than the whole British library. How can information come by itself? So the only logical option, the only option that is left, that there must be something who is always eternal, always existed, that willed, this universe to exist has the knowledge to bring this universe into existence and must have the power why for example this phone the, the, this phone if the if the creator had the knowledge had the will but he doesn't have the ability can this phone exist Repeat that. Okay. When, <clears throat> if the if the creator of this phone yeah. has the knowledge to know how to create this phone mm -hmm. wants to bring this phone to existence which is intention mm -hmm. but he doesn't have the ability would this phone ever exist Probably not. No, because otherwise there's nothing but potential existence. And we know that this phone is an actual existence. So therefore that creator, that something, has the will, has the knowledge, must have the ability to create. Because we know this universe exists. It's mm -hmm. not a potential existence. Mm -hmm. It's an actual existence. So, uh... so the only logical conclusion that is left, which is from the Quran, is that there must be 
an uncreated creator that always existed, that has the power, the will, and the knowledge to bring the universe into existence. And why wouldn't it be the Christian one? Why would, would it be, why wouldn't it be the Christian one? Ah, good question. So now it's on the presupposition that you believe in God. So now you're asking about the concept of God. Good, very good. The reason why, because there can only be one creator. There can only be one God. What do Christians say? The Christians say, they believe in the concept of the Trinity. They believe that the Father is fully God. The Son is fully God. And, why and the Holy Spirit is fully why God. Not, why not? No, but why not the, the uh, Romans who believe that the, there was... Ah, uh, very Zers, good, uh, very good. Why not? Because God is perfect. And if you look at other religions, the, what the characteristics and attributes that they give to this creator has deficiencies. For example, if you look at Greek mythology, what does Greek mythology show? Gods are fighting each other for power. Mm -hmm. But if God is all powerful, why does he need to fight for power? Mm. And this is the argument from the Quran. The Quran gives the answer that had there been gods besides Allah, each god would have fought each other for power. Doesn't that show deficiency? Doesn't that, doesn't that show weakness? If God is all powerful, why does he need to fight for power? Mm -hmm. And if you look at the Christian God, the Christian concept of God, they say that the, that the Son is dependent upon the Father. And we know from the definition of God, God is not dependent. When you read the Bible, Jesus Christ, peace be upon him, is mentioned in the, in the Gospel of John, chapter number 5, verse number 30. Jesus Christ, peace be upon him, he says, that I can of my own self do nothing, as I hear a judge, and my judgment is just. For I seek not my own will, but the will of my Father is in heaven. So Jesus is showing here that he submits to the Father. Okay. Does God submit to anything? Should God submit to anything? If he's all powerful and almighty, does he need to submit to anyone's authority? Um, I would say no. No. Yeah. So but, Jesus, yeah. But, uh, because we've already agreed the definition of God. Yeah. That God is one and only. God yeah. is independent, self-sufficient. He doesn't need of anything. So do you come on uh, Sundays to make like theological arguments with other people with other faiths? Yeah, yeah. And yeah. the intention would be to convert people? No, or? that's not my intention. My, in my intention as a Muslim is to convey the message. <clears throat> the guidance is up to God, whether he wants to guide you or not. I can only convey the message to you. And okay. it's up to you then to accept Islam or not accept Islam. But I can only convey the message. I can't, I can't guide your heart. Only God can guide your heart if he wants to. So I'm not here to convert people. I'm only here to convey. I'm not like a Christian missionary that, you know, put, puts people throw into it and all believe in Christianity, no. Okay. Because Islam gives you intellectual proofs. It gives you intellectual proofs why Islam is true. So this argument, the fact that I prove it to the existence of the Creator, this is from the Quran. I'm using the Quranic argument. And the definition of God by necessity is one. There can only be one God. Mm -hmm. but, if you, but the Christian God, they say Jesus is also God which goes against the definition of God that both of us agree. Jesus used to eat. He used to eat and drink like us. What does that show you? That shows you that Jesus is dependent because he doesn't, because he has to eat to keep himself alive. But we've agreed that God doesn't eat. God is self-sufficient. He doesn't need to eat or drink. As far as I know, the Christians don't believe like a... Uh, yeah, uh, I'm, not, I'm not that familiar, but I believe like... Uh, when Jesus dies, not really dies, he go join God, he continues yeah. to be God or something. But if we but if we compare if we compare the qualities of Jesus with the qualities of God, they contradict. Because God God uh, God, 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 is not, God doesn't have a beginning. Do you agree with that? God should not have a beginning. God is not born. Yeah, he doesn't have a birthday. You look at you look at Jesus. What do they? What do we go by? We go by Gregorian calendar, 2022. What does that mean? Why? So the year 2022. Yeah, I know the God was Jesus was born. Yeah. So you. So so how can Jesus be God if he was born? It goes against the. It goes against the definition of God. So why is he worthy to be worshipped? Because Jesus is a human being like us. He used to eat and drink. Mm -hmm. In fact, in fact, there's a verse in the Quran for the Christians to ponder in chapter 5, verse 75. But look at the Messiah, Jesus. Look at the Messiah and his mother. They both used to eat. 
Look how clear we made the signs to them, yet they turn away. Mm. That only shows the humanity of Jesus, not the divinity. Because if Jesus was divine, he doesn't need to eat. Mm. But because he's a human, he has to eat. So... Yeah. Uh, <laughs> yeah? I guess, I guess you're right. Yeah. You've got, you've so, got, for, so, so look, look, can it, can, can the, so for example, the definition of triangle, of what's what? the definition of triangle, the shape of the triangle, what's triangle. the definition? I would assume the definition of a triangle would be uh, uh, a shape that has three sides. Correct. Now, if this triangle becomes four-sided, is that a triangle? No, because it doesn't fit the definition. That's it. So when we put Jesus to the test, does he meet the requirement as God? He doesn't. So you say that the Christians don't believe in the real God? And no, cri cri yeah, Christians have wrong... In fact, when you read the Bible, Jesus, peace be upon him, never claimed he's God. So you would, you would disagree also with the uh, uh, in, people uh, from Hinduism, yes. Buddhism? Yes. Uh, yes, because they have deficiency. Ju Judaism? Judaism, yes. Do you know why? Because Judaism, they attribute God with deficiency. For example, if you read the Bible, they believe that God created the heavens and the earth in six days, and on the seventh day he rested. Now, rest is a deficiency, it's a weakness. No, I, not really, I need some rest and it's not a deficiency. No, no, it shows weakness, correct? It shows weakness. We need to rejuvenate ourselves, we're tired. That's the reason why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Almighty God, to respond to them. Allahu la ilaha illahu al-hayyul qayyum. La ta'khuru sinatu wa la nawm. That Allah, there is none worthy to be worshipped except He, the self uh, the self-subsisting, the ever-living. No slumber overtakes him, neither sleep overtakes him. Hmm. He's ever living. Hmm. He doesn't sleep. <laughs> but <laughs> I'm a he human, doesn't rest. So I'll probably need to go exactly. To but can we attribute this to God? Uh, yeah, I would assume there's the same criticism that you put on Christianity. So if you look at the criteria, if you look at all other religions, in some way or the other, they attribute God with weakness. But if you look at Islam, God is perfect at all times. Hmm. His, his, his attributes is perfect, all-knowing, all-powerful. He cannot be all-powerful, uh, he cannot be weak at any point in time. That's illogical. Yeah, because, in, because by nature, God is always powerful. Okay. God is all-powerful, God is all-knowing. Hmm. If you read the Bible, Jesus, yeah. peace be upon him, in the, in the Gospel of Mark, chapter 13, hmm. verse 32, Jesus says, on that day, the hour, no man, no angel, not, not the son, knows the hour except the father. Okay. If God is all-knowing, mm -hmm. How come Jesus, and if Jesus is God, how come he doesn't know the hour? That means he's not all knowing. Mm. Okay? So now we've agreed this. We've agreed that there's only one God, only worthy to be worshipped. We don't associate partners with his creation. Okay? We believe in all the prophets and messengers. We believe in Adam, we believe in Noah, Abraham, Moses, Jesus. We all believe that they came with one message, which is to worship one God only, not to associate any partners with him, not to worship the creation. That's why we ask the Christians, don't worship Jesus. Mm -hmm. We believe in Jesus, but don't put him to God. And oh, that's the reason probably you don't want representation of Allah, I would assume. You don't, you don't worship uh, images. No, we don't worship images. Okay. Yeah, because, because what, what does Allah say in the Quran? Walam yakulu kufar, there is nothing like unto him. So the moment you, the moment you, 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 uh, you try to depict any representation about God, mm -hmm. that's not God. No, that, that is, influence deeply the uh, Islamic art. That's it. And even in, even, in, even in the Old Testament, he said, Thou shalt have no graven images of me. Mm -hmm. Even in the Old Testament, they cannot make any graven images. What do Christians do? They yeah. portray images mm -hmm. of Jesus. But they go against their book. So now, we believe that all the prophets and messengers were sent with one message. To worship Allah, to worship God alone, not to associate partners with him and stay away from false gods, false deities. Mm. So we believe in Adam, Noah, Abraham, Moses, Jesus. But we believe that all the previous prophets before Muhammad, peace be upon him, they were only sent for their people and for their time. So they were, uh, they were local prophets. Mm -hmm. So for example, Moses, peace be upon him, was only sent for the children of Israel. Mm -hmm. Jesus, peace be upon him, was only sent to the Israelites. Yeah, why? Because even if you read the Bible, 
In Matthew chapter 15, verse 24, Jesus says, I have not been sent but unto the lost sheep of the house of Israel. Mm. So he wasn't sent for me and you. He was sent for only the Israelites. Mm. But Muhammad, peace be upon him, he's not only a messenger to the Arabs mm. or a messenger to the Jews. He's a, he's a messenger for the whole of humanity for all times. Mm. Because the Quran mentions in chapter 21, verse 107. We have sent you not on Muhammad except as, as a mercy to all the worlds. Almighty God also says elsewhere that We have sent you not on Muhammad except as a universal messenger, giving glad tidings and warning people against sin. But most of the human beings yet do not know. So the mission of Muhammad, peace be upon him, is that the message that the Muhammad, peace be upon him, came in the Quran, the religion, uh, sorry, not the religion, the Quran, the message that he came with is to be followed for, for the whole of humanity, it's for everyone, mm -hmm. not for only Arabs, not for Jews. Now the question you may ask is this, how do I know that Muhammad is a messenger of God? It's a, it's a very valid question, right? Because anyone can claim themselves their, their prophets and you find out after they're liars, right? Make stuff up, they have some motives, right? So we believe that all the prophets came with miracles. Mm -hmm. Yeah, came with miracles. What does miracle mean? Miracle means anything that is beyond the capacity of a human being mm -hmm. to show that this is from the divine. So, for example, at the time of Moses, peace be upon him, when he turned. Why do you, oh, excuse me, to no problem, no problem. Why, why, uh, when you say Muhammad, you say peace, peace be upon him. We say him. to all the prophets, peace okay, be upon all of them. Jesus, peace oh. be upon him? Yeah, we say Jesus, peace be upon him, Moses, peace be upon him, because no Muslim is a Muslim if he does not believe in all the prophets and messengers. That's part of our belief. Okay. Because whoever, dis whoever rejects Jesus is not a Muslim. Whoever, okay. whoever rejects Moses or any other prophets, okay. even if they accept Muhammad as a messenger of God, as a prophet, but they reject Jesus, reject Moses, they're not Muslim. Okay. Because, because that's they don't respect the word of the Quran. That's it. So, we believe that all the prophets were given miracles. Miracle shows, testifies, that what they came with is to show their prophethood, that they were sent by God. So at the time of Moses, peace be upon him, he performed the staff and he became a snake. That's a miracle. Why? <clears throat> because a stick, the property of the, of the stick can never become a snake, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah? But it's a miracle to show that, that he's a messenger of God. Yeah, that this came from the divine. So what, what was the uh, miracle of Jesus? What was the yeah. miracle so the mir of good, good question. So the miracle of Jesus is that he used to, uh, he used to uh, treat um, blind people. Yeah. He used to treat the, uh, leprosy. The, the, uh, all the thing about resurrection and the... Not the resurrection, no. no you don't. We don't believe in the crucifixion resurrection. However, what we do testify is that Jesus, peace be upon him, used, used to perform miracles by God's permission. For example, he used to touch the person yeah. and a, a person who's blind can see. Yeah. He used to... Um, the thing about the wine converting water... No, no, the, 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 we, no, no, we don't believe in that. We don't okay. believe in that. No, okay. no. So, but, but he was curing people. He was curing people. Okay. So, that's, that's, that, so that shows that this is from the divine okay yeah but you may ask yourself this question but i wasn't living at the time of moses to see this miracle uh i wasn't at the time of jesus to see he was performing miracles so why should i believe in it we say because these miracles were only to convince their people it's not for us because the, the miracle where be, the, so the miracle that Moses came with, yeah. the miracle that Jesus came with, it wasn't for us. Uh, it was to con convert the people where they're... It, it was to convince the... of his people, of his time. Okay. Why? Because the message... So there's no way for me to know it's not addressed for me. So... Exactly. So, so now... How do I... Why would I believe him? That's it. So why should you believe in Muhammad as the messenger of God? What miracle does he come with? But I, is, yeah. uh, I would assume it's the same explanation. Though. It's not for... Me, it's for people of this time. No, because we believe that we believe all the prophets preach nothing but Islam. Islam basically means submission to the will of the one true God. Yeah, so anyone who submits to the will, yeah. Is that, yeah. Uh, there's no way for me. If you're saying that prophets perform miracles. Yes. And miracles were uh, uh, for the people of their time. Yeah, before Muhammad. Yes. But Muhammad is, uh, is specific? Yeah, or? but Muhammad is unique. Okay. The miracle that he came with, we can test today. Which was? Which was the Quran. Was... Oh. Okay. We believe so the Quran. First of all, the Quran. His miracle was written in the book of God. That would be his miracle? Yeah, yeah. So okay. why, do, why do I say this is a miracle? First of all, the Quran. 
first of all, oh, the so that, that would be the reason why uh, Muslims get very upset when uh, the, the the Quran is uh, dissect, dis, uh, uh, desecrated. Oh, uh, desecrated. Yeah. yeah, yeah. But the thing is this: even as Muslims, we're not supposed to do this to other religious scriptures, let alone the Quran. We shouldn't be burning the books, these religious books. But we shouldn't burn the Bible like, and... So you would say like, uh, yeah. let's say Taliban people are wrong Muslims? Yeah, yeah, they're wrong. Because, they're wrong. because they destroy the statues of yeah. Buddhas and... That's, that's what I'm saying, like, do not, judge, do not judge Islam based upon the actions of the Muslims. Yeah, okay. we should so always judge Islam based upon the Quran and the teachings of the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him. Me, even me as a Muslim, don't judge yeah. me, don't judge Islam because of my actions. Because I'm imperfect. Always so go back to the Quran and the teachings of the Prophet. So that would be the uh, um, criteria you. Correct. Okay. Okay. Yeah. But like for, for example, it's not fair for it, me to say that all Christians are terrorists because one Christian was a terrorist. No. Yeah. yeah. I, I I don't judge Christianity based on the actions of the Christian because this Christian might be lunatic. Mm -hmm. He might not be, he not he might not be teaching he might not be following the Bible. So I cannot generalize and say all Christians are terrorists. So, but what are considered then good Muslims? So good Muslims, see, this is where like, uh, so, so a Muslim should, should obey God as much as he can. However, we can sin. In fact, yeah. the, in fact the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, he said that every child of Adam is a sinner, but the best of sinners are those who repent. So God doesn't expect us to be perfect. Yeah. We will sin, we will, we will fall short, and but we should always turn back to God for forgiveness. Yeah? So that's the reason why when we look at Islam, don't look at the Muslims. No, go back to what Islam teaches. But do, do you, I would assume you, you would consider certain Muslims to be good Muslims? Yeah, 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 Muslims of course. Yes, of course. Like there, are, there, there are some Muslims that are racist. Mm -hmm. But in my religion, racism is wrong. Because the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, he said that no Arab is superior over a non-Arab, neither non-Arab is superior over an Arab. A black person is not superior over a white person, neither the white person is superior over a black person, except God consciousness, piety. Mm -hmm. So racism is no place in Islam. But unfortunately, you find some Muslims, they're racist. Mm -hmm. But you cannot then say, oh, therefore, Islam teaches racism no, no, because no, no, Muslims, yeah? yeah? Okay. So, the miracle that the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, came with is the Quran. Why do I say that? First of all, the Quran has been memorized by millions of people, okay? I can bring you a 10-year-old kid, a 6-year-old kid that memorized the whole Quran from back to cover in the language that he doesn't even understand. So you, you see, I, I've memorized uh, some uh, chapters in the Quran, right? But I, I haven't memorized the whole chapter. But someone as, 20, as 10 years younger than me, they've memorized the whole Quran. I can bring, the youngest kid, as far as I know, is six years old. Imagine six years old is able to memorize a book that consists of more than 6,000 verses in the language that he doesn't understand. How's that possible? So that would be a miracle or? What, it has to be a miracle. Why? Because the, first of all, the Quran makes the promise in chapter 15, verse 9, that indeed we have sent the reminder, which is the Quran. We have sent down the Quran and indeed we will preserve it. So Almighty God, he, he puts a promise upon himself that I will preserve this book. And one of the, one of the ways how it shows the preservation of the Quran is memorization. Mm -hmm. For example, if we bring all the religious scriptures together, mm -hmm. we bring the Bible, the Bhagavad Gita, the Hindu scriptures, the Sikh scriptures, all the religious scriptures, the Quran as well, and we put all of them in the sea, in the ocean. The only religious book that will go back to its original form is the Quran. Do you know why? This is memorized. Oh, okay. 11 million people, more than 11 million Muslims memorize the Quran. But the Bible, it will not go back to its original form because they haven't memorized it. And the promise Allah mentioned in the Quran is so, that indeed we have revealed the Quran easy for remembrance. Okay. So is there anyone who will receive admonition? So Almighty God even gives us promise that my book, the Quran, is easy for remembrance, easy for memorization. So that would be the proof that... Uh... That's one of the proofs. Okay. Yeah. So, first of all, the message has to be preserved. Would you agree with that? The what? The message has to be preserved. What do you mean? So meaning that the message has to be original. It can't be corrupt. 
and the Quran, the mechanism, because, for example, if you, read the Quran, so I'm not no problem. If you memorize the times table, yeah. yeah, you memorize the time table. If I was to say, yeah. you know, uh, two times eight, sixteen, right? You memorize, mm -hmm. and then someone taught you this, and then there's a chain, and it goes back to your teacher, right? Mm -hmm. Would that ever be corrupted? Would that the mathematical uh, because you memorize stems from logic? So I would say no. I'm just giving an example. Like for example, you memorize the times table, right? Yeah. Two times eight. For example, two times eight equals to sixteen. You memorize that. Yeah. If you memorize that, and 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 this has been taught to you through generations, uh, would that be lost? You memorized it. It's in your heart. Well, if I die, it will be lost. I know, but someone else can correct you. No, no, two, two times eight is not ten, it's sixteen. So similarly, when it comes to the Qur'an, when we recite the Qur'an, the Imam, remember before the Imam? When he recites the Qur'an, do you know what? Someone can correct him. So if he makes a mistake, someone behind him, from his head, he say no. For example, we, we, the, we, the, yeah. The, the, the thing is, it's probably not about the text itself that there's disagreements, the, the interpretation of it. No, 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 that, that, no. Yeah, yeah, but that's different. What I'm yeah. saying to you is the memorization of the Quran. Yeah, I know the there's, there's like schools dedicated for... Yeah, your, so it's mass memorized. Yeah. So if an imam, for example, yeah, if he mistake, makes a mistake, yeah, people, then someone else can, can correct him. Why? Because they memorized it too. Yeah, but so I, I, yeah. I would say the problem probably is not in uh, reading the, the Quran uh, as it is, because... No, but uh, no, no. What I'm what I'm trying to show to you, I'm yeah. trying to show to you that the Quran can never be corrupt because it's memorized in, in people's hearts. So the first, oh. the first, the, so the first thing that the Quran needs to meet is preservation. Mm -hmm. So how can a six-year-old kid who doesn't know the Arabic as a language memorize more than six thousand verses? How's that possible? And if you ask this kid in modern English, Kepa Haulak, how are you? They're like, I don't know what that means. But they're still able to, you know, uh, pronounce the Quran clearly, the words clearly, mm -hmm. grammatically. Is that, for example, uh, uh, someone... So you would say it's a miracle that this kid is able to... Uh, or it's... it's but, well... Yeah. Can you, show, can you show me any, any other religious book that can meet that criteria? But, well... Uh, I would assume no. Uh, no. Nope. And, and, well, but... At the same time, there's no other religion who asks their kids to learn their... To, to, Do you know why? To learn the book. Because the Qur'an is meant for the whole of humanity, for all times. So therefore, the message has to be preserved for all times. And memorization is the way. Mm. So how can a six-year-old kid able to memorize the whole book in the language that he doesn't even understand? But well, I would assume there's probably a uh, neurological... No, there isn't. There's no? No, nope, okay. nothing. I don't know. Someone can I'm correct me. If I make a mistake, someone can make a mistake. Uh, someone can correct me. Yeah. yeah, for example, if I say... Are you Muslim, alhamdulillah? Okay. Uh, look, uh, how old are you? Twelve, mashallah. If I say to him, Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen, Ar Rahman Rahim, Iyya Kan Abdu, Iyya Kan Astain. Now I made a mistake before. Do you remember? I'll recite again. You've remembered Surah al Fatiha, right? Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen, Ar Rahman Rahim, Iyya Kan Abdu, Iyya Kan That's it. He corrected it. A 12 year old kid. I can bring a 6 year old kid. Okay. Memorize it. So, first of all, the preservation of the Quran that shows the truthfulness of the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him. Why? Because the Quran makes the promise that I will preserve the message. When you look at the Bible, the Bible went through changes, yeah, yeah. yeah but, the Torah, the Quran didn't. But it's not a proof, it's just that a lot of people adopted it as good. a, a so the book and good, but, started But reciting. isn't that one of the criteria that needs to be met? Because I will give you a falsification test in the Quran. A, a criteria to be met to be yeah. about what? Yeah, so there is a criteria. In the Quran, you mentioned in chapter 4, verse 82. It says that, do they not consider the Quran with care? Had it been from anyone besides God, they will find there in many contradictions. So now the Quran is giving you a falsification test. If you want to falsify the Quran, all you need to, all you need to do is find a single contradiction. So you say there, there's no contradiction? No contradiction. Okay. And you know why this is an amazing uh, testament? Because 
the Quran, as its original transmission, wasn't written, it was oral. Mm. So it was oral, then it was written out by the scribes. Mm. The Quran literally means that which is recited. So the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, he claims that he brings revelation from God through the angel Gabriel, and the Prophet just regurgitated. Mm -hmm. Okay? And the Quran wasn't revealed in one. The Quran was revealed over a 23 year period in different places. So it was like a piecemeal, right? So it wasn't in one book. What's amazing is when you read the Quran, I remember this is, this is oral. It's not written. It was oral, then it was written. If I say something, I can't take it back anymore. But yet the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, he, reg he regurgitated the stories of the prophets many times in the Quran and yet there's no contradiction. For example, if, if, if somebody narrates the same story over and over again, what's the chances that he'll contradict himself? High chances. But yet over a 23 year period, you know, the story of Moses, the story of Abraham, the story, of, there's repetitive stories, right? Yet there's no contradiction. Mm. Over a 23 year period. How's that possible? I don't know, you tell me. Because look, in this discussion, yeah. I think we had a discussion for like 45 minutes, right? Maybe I must have made hour. many, maybe an hour. I must have made many mistakes. Many grammatical mistakes. I must have contradicted myself, right? I'm talking about a 23 year period. And yet the Quran makes the claim, you'll not find any contradiction. Mm -hmm. I don't know. Yeah. So therefore, this is, a, this, is a, this is what we call another miracle. Mm -hmm. Because if you look at the Bible, the Bible has many contradictions. Mm -hmm. Many contradictions. And I'm pretty sure you know this already. Not I'll, I'll give you one example. Yeah. If you read in Chronicles chapter 2, verse 22, it says, Joachim reigned at the age of uh, 22. But if you read in 2 Kings chapter number 2, uh, sorry, chapter number 8, verse number 26, Joachim, the same individual, mm. reigned at the age of 42. Mm. How can you reign at the age of 42 and 22 at the same time? It's a contradiction. Mm -hmm. Now, if you can find a contradiction like that in the Quran, then I will no longer be a Muslim. So, okay, do you want me to Google it? <laughs> no, because I'm not. Uh, but you haven't read it. First, no, read no. it. Okay. Then scrutinize. But this okay. is the but this is the falsification test that the Quran comes. That okay. if you don't believe this is from God, yeah. find your contradiction. Okay. And imagine the primary audience at the time of the Prophet peace be upon him. Why couldn't they find a single contradiction? They were the primary audience. Mm -hmm. And also the Prophet Muhammad peace be upon him, he made many prophecies. Mm -hmm. So prophecies meaning that he spoke about future events. Mm -hmm. now I'll give you one example. The Prophet Muhammad peace be upon him, he said that a time will come when barefooted Arab Bedouins would compete each other in constructing two buildings. Imagine the Prophet peace be upon him said this more than 1,400 years ago in the, med in the middle of the desert in Arabia. Mm -hmm. Now, the Prophet peace be upon him is making a claim here that one day you Arabs the same people who are barefooted, the same people who, you got nothing with you apart from camels and tents. Mm -hmm. You're gonna construct skyscrapers. You're gonna construct tall buildings, each other. Now, if I was to live at the time of the Prophet, peace be upon him, it would make sense for the Persians and the Romans to compete each other because they were the two greatest empires. The Arabs were never known for constructing tall buildings. In fact, if they want to, if they want to build buildings, they would rather build buildings underground and not overground. Because in the, in, the, in, the, in, the, in the Arab desert, it's a harsh environment. Mm -hmm. So if it's so hot, why would I, why would I build two buildings? Mm -hmm. No, I would rather build underground. But yet the Prophet is saying, it will not be the Romans, it will not be the Persians, you Arabs, the same desert Bedouins, you're going to construct two buildings. You're going to compete each other. Now, where is the tallest building in the world? Uh, I would assume it's uh, in Dubai. It's no longer Dubai anymore. Uh, it's probably in uh, Saudi Arabia, but... Jet the Tower. Jet the, the Tower. Do you know who's but also... They are building it, it's not built yet. I don't think it's built yet, no. No, no it's not. But so look at... What, so it's not, it's like, it's a project. So it's, it's a project, but, it's look at, a, but look at it, look at the amazing prophecy that the Muhammad... So, so it's the Burj Khalifa, I think, in Dubai. Burj Khalifa in Dubai. Yeah, yeah. But if, you, if I can show you a Google image right now, that Dubai in the year 1990 was a desert. 30 years ago. I'm talking about 30 years ago. Mm -hmm. Now you know that Burj Khalifa is the tallest building in the world. How did Prophet Muhammad peace be upon knew this 49 years ago? How could you know this? Well, every civilization has built 
tall building, so... No, 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 no. No, no. No problem. But he's saying in the 7th century in Arabia, yeah. who are desert, who are Bedouins. You know, they used to live by tents. They were simple-minded people. They were barefooted. Imagine. They were not known for constructing two buildings. So how did the Prophet, peace be upon him, able to know that in the middle of the desert, you're going to construct two buildings? How do you know that? No. Where do you think you got this from? Probably uh, the creator. The creator. The creator. Yeah. So that shows you that's a that's a proof that he's a messenger well, of God. I wouldn't call it a proof, but uh, where, so where else could you get this from? Because well, a proof uh, in logic is uh, there's rarely proof of things. Do you know what's uh, the miracle? The miracle of this prophecy yeah. is not when it happened. It's the timing of when he said that. Because he said that at a time when Arabs were weak. You know the Roman and the Persian, I don't know if you know about history, right? The Romans, the Romans and the Persian Empire, they were the two greatest empires. So the Arabian Peninsula was right in the middle. The Roman and the Persian, so the Roman was on the left hand side, well, the Persian Empire was on the right hand side. Well, I think you got to Romans, uh, yeah. They were powerful. They were, they were one of the powerful empires. But at, uh, during the time of Muhammad, yes, time, yes. When was that? This was 600 in the in, in, in six hundred. Yeah, in the in the 600. seventh century. Yeah. Okay, but the Romans were not there anymore. It was the uh, Byzantine Empire. But Byzantine is the same as Roman Roman Empire. It's just uh, it's used interchangeably. Byzantine Sassanid is also known as Persian Empire. So what I'm saying to you is, look, here's the Arabian Peninsula. Yeah. Desert, no buildings. They were they were um, they were shepherds. Imagine they were shepherds, farmers. Yeah, but, but besides that, on the left and the right hand side, you have the two so greatest empires fighting each other. And you know what? They used to go over the Arabian Peninsula. They didn't even thought about conquering mm -hmm. Arabian Peninsula because there's nothing to conquer. Mm -hmm. And yet the Prophet Muhammad peace be upon him, he's saying it would not be the Romans, it would not be the Persians that would you know. Uh, you know, construct sky, skyscrapers. It were you Arabs, and not only that, he said, "You Arabs, you're going to compete each other." And I just said to you, uh, and we we just mentioned that the Jeddah Tower, the, the, the Saudis are planning to beat Dubai. Mm -hmm. so how did the Prophet Muhammad knew this 49 years ago? I can give you many prophecies. The Prophet Muhammad peace be upon him, he said that a time will come when interest, you know, interest, when interest will be so prevalent that no one will be able to, no one will be able to avoid, everyone will be affected. So now, interest would be so, so prevalent, so widespread, yeah. that no one will be able to escape from it. Everyone will be affected indirectly. So when you mean interest, uh, interest personal like, interest or like, interest no, oh, in, good. on money? Like, m yeah, money, like mortgage, mortgage yeah. loans. The fact that you need to buy a house, you need, uh, uh, you have to do mortgage. The fact that you need to buy a car, there's interest. Yeah. Now we're living in a global interest-based economy, yeah, and we're talking I, about. I think, uh, if I'm not mistaken, yeah. uh, Islam pr uh, uh, precludes uh, from charging interest. Yeah, I know, yeah, I know, I know, I know. Good point. But what the Prophet Muhammad peace be upon him, he's saying, he's saying that's one of the signs of the Day of Judgment. The so fact that we're using interest. That what the interest will be so widespread, and now you see that interest, you can't, you you can't run without interest. You can't, you, can't, you, can't, you can't escape from interest. You're affected by it, indirectly. Well, of course, yeah, but it's, when, it's when, part of... Uh, yeah. When you just you put your money in, a, in your account, the bank... There's sell, interest. The bank sell your money. Yeah. The what? The what? Is, the I'm not banking. No, what, what I'm saying is, even, even when you open up a bank, yeah, yeah even the, then the bank takes some of your money. It's based on interest. You can't escape from it. Because we're living in a global interest-based economy. So how did the Prophet Muhammad peace be upon you this? Based on interest? Yeah, we're based on interest-based economy. Globalization. Everything, everything is based on interest. Mortgages, loans, not really. not credit, really. credit cards. Say. Yeah, credit cards. Yeah. 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 When you, yeah, I think credit cards are part of bro, our... Bro. 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 It's when interest. You, when you open a bank account, yeah. you put your money. The bank sell your money. Yeah. Sorry, my bank. The your bank, bank yeah. sell 
your money to other people. No, no, yes, deposit. Did how no. deposit? There's gross interest. That, that, they do. If you go no, to your, no. if you go to your savings, they, they if you go. That's one topic that I know of. No, 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 no. You're missing the point. Money. Sorry, sorry. You're, you're missing the point. What I'm trying to tell you, what I'm trying to tell you, that we're living in a global interest-based economy. It's so widespread. I would say interest is part of uh, money creation. That's it. Yeah. But it's all widespread now. It's global. It's everywhere now. Yeah. So how did the Prophet Muhammad knew this 49 years ago? And remember, he was a shepherd, a simple-minded. And yet he's able to prophesy future events that we are living right now. Mm. Where did you get this information from? So is there any prof prophecies that ad haven't materialized yet? That's a very good question. I would, this is my claim, you will not find a single prophecy that Muhammad, peace be upon him, made that turns out to be false. That's my claim. That's your claim? Yeah. So all the prophecies that he's made... Uh, Majority of the prophecies are fulfilled. Majority. Okay, so there's a few... That uh, only are... very few. One. Which, which would be... Like, uh, for example, the Euphrates River, there will be discovery of gold under the Euphrates River. It doesn't... That, that, has, that hasn't materialized yet, but based on probability, he made other prophecies that came to be true. So based on probability, but how, it, it, how, it's, how it's much... Not, it's not probability anymore. But how many, t okay, but how many times can he get it right? If he made many prophecies, I can give you so, many prophecies. Okay, so you're, many you're prophecies saying, that Muhammad Sassan came with. But if it's God, if it's the... So yeah. this prophecy about the go uh, gold under your free... Yeah, Euphrates. we believe this is going to happen very soon. So it's going to happen? Yeah, it's going to happen. Why? Because we believe Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, he's not saying this out of his desire. No, he's getting this from God. He used to be known as Al-Amin. Al-Amin. He was known as the trustworthy. He was known as the truthful person. Even his enemies, even his enemies, even described him as the truthful person. As a, as a truthful person. So he, so he had credibility in his society. He had a good reputation. He was the most trusted person in, in his community. And yet the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, he's giving you proofs. And I've given you two evidences, two future events that he couldn't, that he couldn't even know. And we're living in this time right now. That the Arabs will construct each other and construct two buildings. This is happening right now. Dubai 30 years ago was just a desert. Now all of a sudden we've been the span of 30 years. I was born in 1993. When I was born in 1993, Dubai was just a desert. It didn't, it didn't, have, it didn't have, even have buildings. Mm -hmm. And within my lifetime, I'm seeing Dubai is developing. And they have the tallest building. Mm -hmm. And the Prophet didn't say this 30 years ago. He said this 1,400 years ago. Mm -hmm. So where did you get this from? And how could you get it right? I don't know. I guess it's the Creator. The Creator. So doesn't that show you he must be Messenger of God? Um, I think it's a bold claim from these two examples good to... so what i advise you to do what i advise you to do is that look i've given you some information about islam mm -hmm. i've given you like a taster and i don't expect you i don't expect you to believe you know right now no i'm not here to convert you i'm only here to convey the message of islam mm -hmm. however if islam makes sense to you then you're more than welcome to accept islam but however if you're still not convinced I've at least given you, you know, some taste, mm -hmm. some taster, like some inquisitiveness, right? I've given you some sort of interest right now to look into Islam, right? Would mm -hmm. you agree? I would say so. Yeah. yeah. So now what I'll ask you, if you have a copy of the Quran, I don't know if you have a copy of the Quran no, or... It's does probably it, easily available. Everything. Easily available. But if, uh, brothers, does anyone have a copy of the Quran? Uh, All of that, no problem. No. You can find a copy of the Quran, you can go on the, on the website. Yeah, uh, but it's translated. So translated into English, yeah. Yeah, yeah. because well, I, okay. Yeah, yeah. Or, or in the language that you understand the best. If you yeah. come next yeah. week, we can, we'll we can give it to you, right? Uh, I won't be here. No problem. <laughs> because but, I'm, I'm a tourist. So. But now, but now, I've, now it's worth to read about Islam, right? Online. Because now Islam came with a bold claim. Mm -hmm. Islam gives you proofs, rational mm -hmm. proofs. First of all, I you know, it, it's, now it's, challenge it. Sorry? Now you can challenge it. After you study Islam, you mm -hmm. can challenge whether this is from God or not. And one more thing before I leave you. There was a study that was conducted in Edinburgh University. Edinburgh University. They studied uh, the reverts, those who accepted Islam. Do you know how many years they studied Islam to become Muslim? What was the question? So, the, so, 
So basically, there was a, there was a study so, that was yeah. conducted in Edinburgh, yeah. in Scotland, in yeah. Edinburgh University. They studied about reverts, those who accepted Islam, right? Do you know how many years they looked into Islam before they, they accepted Islam? People who studied Islam. Okay. So before people, they accepted Islam, do you know? Who studied Islam? Yeah. Then they accepted Islam. How many years did they have to study? I don't know. You, uh, you'll probably, I'll probably guess a high number and you'll give me a very short number. Seven years. Do you know what that shows you? That shows you these reverts, they didn't just accept Islam what, easily. Reverts, what is a revert? So revert meaning, uh, so we say revert. No, revert meaning someone who accepted Islam. Okay. Yeah, so non-Muslim to a Muslim. Yeah. And what this study shows is that they studied Islam so much, they studied Islam for seven years on average yeah. before they accepted Islam. Within that seven years, do you not think that they would challenge about Islam? Do you not think they would will, they will question about Islam? How do I know Islam is true? Mm -hmm. But because they questioned Islam for many years, they accepted Islam. Mm. So, so Islam doesn't expect you to say, well, you know, believe in God blindly. No, mm -hmm. we don't ask you to say, oh, just believe in Muhammad, peace be upon him. No, mm -hmm. we give you evidence. Now, mm -hmm. just giving you evidence, proofs, rationality. Mm. So now, now I've given you that taste, that taster. Now it's upon you to look into Islam more. Read the Quran understand the life of the Prophet Muhammad peace be upon him, and then you come to conclusion. If you believe that this is from God, you have to accept Islam. Mm. Why? Because if, if you're convinced that Islam is true, there's a day of judgment. Well, as uh, the same thing as Christians? Uh, same as Christians. But if you, if you acknowledge that Islam is true, but you choose not to accept Islam, then there's no excuse for you on the day of judgment. Why? Because the message of Islam made clear to you, you're convinced Islam is true, mm -hmm. but if you don't accept Islam before you die, then on the day of judgment, you have no excuse in front of your Lord. However, if you do accept Islam and you know it's the truth, then paradise is promised for you. And the what? Is, then paradise, heaven is, is promised for you. Okay. So I'm a, I'm a giver if, of... If, I, if yeah. I accept it like a, a year before I die, would I... What's could... the guarantee that you're going to leave this park alive? alive? What's the guarantee? Well, hopefully, hopefully I, I hope it's not a threat that you're... No, 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 not afraid. <laughs> not afraid. No, 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 no. But what's one thing that we know for certain in this life? One thing that we know for certain. Yeah, that well, no one can dispute. We've established uh, that, uh, well, even that, uh, that nothing comes from... Oh, yeah, yeah. Oh, sorry, sorry. Let me yeah. let me rephrase it. No, no, sorry, or sorry. Two so plus that's... two equals four. I yeah, think no, no, that's... No sorry, sorry. It's my understanding. Right? Sorry, it's I didn't clarify to you properly. Yeah. Would you say that you're going to die one day? Um, yeah, I would say, right. I would say so. so. you're going to die one day, right? This life is a test. It's a test for the hereafter. So now, I've conveyed the message of Islam to you. Mm -hmm. I've given you some taster. And, I've, proved, and I've, I've tried to convince, not convince, I don't like to use the word convince, but I've given you evidences why there has to be one God that's worth to be worshipped why Muhammad is the messenger of God, hmm. now is upon you to look into it. Because okay. my job is only to convey the message. Okay. But the guidance, that belongs to God. Oh, I can't force you. Yeah. Okay. Because, it's, because the Quran mentions, La ikraha fi din. There is no compulsion in religion. Truth stands out clear from falsehood. I cannot force you to become Muslim. Okay. It's from your free will. But however, every person will be accountable in the day of judgment mm -hmm. after your death. Hmm. You will either go to paradise e or hell. Even if I'm a good person, if I if I try to do good deeds around me, but now I'm be not, but now I'm not following good. the word of the Quran. Good. I'm not. But now you believe that there is God. You must get your objective morality from the Creator. If you believe in God, there's no such thing as subjective morality. You can't go by how okay. you feel is good, mm. because without Creator, then everything's arbitrary. What I believe is good may be bad for someone. However, when you believe that there is God, then you have to follow what God tells you to do. Why? Because God knows what's good and bad for us. So He shows us a way how to lead our life. And, and Islam, Islam comes with five objectives. Islam came here to preserve religion, the, 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 the freedom to practice a religion, to give us purpose in life. Mm -hmm. Our purpose in life is to worship the Creator. Mm -hmm. Why? Because the fact that He's given us so many blessings, so many favors, Mm -hmm. The fact that he's given you life in the first place. Mm -hmm. If I was to ask you this question, that I'll give you two million pounds, what would you say to me? You'll give me two million pounds. Yeah, let's say for example, I have two million pounds, I'm so generous, I want to give you two million pounds. What would you say to me? Uh, well, I would 
So thank you. Thank you. And you'll never forget me, right? Because two million pounds is a life-changing offer, right? It's life-changing, that two million pounds. Yeah, I would assume. Now I'm going to change the condition. I'll give you two million pounds on one condition. You give me your two eyes. Would you accept the offer? Wait, you want my two eyes against what? So I'll give you two million pounds on the For condition that you give me your two eyes. Um, Would you accept the offer? Probably I want to keep my eyes. Why? Probably. Sorry? Why? Why? Uh, because I like seeing, I would assume. Because you value your two eyes more so, than the two million pounds. So why don't we be grateful to the one who gave you two eyes for free? So how should we show our gratefulness to the creator? So for example, if you want to buy a gift yeah. for your friend, are you going to buy a gift based on what your friend loves or based on what you love? I would say, well, I try to give gifts uh, according to what I think my friends like, Good. but it's still influenced by Good. my own likings. My yeah, own so you're going to buy a gift based on what your friend loves. Right? Yeah, because you know what your friend wants. So therefore, why? Because that shows your true love for your friend, right? Because you know what your friend loves, therefore you're going to give a gift so based on what he loves. So that I give to God what he wants and what he goes. That's, what, to, that's true love. That's worshiping him. That's it. So we shouldn't worship the way how... We shouldn't worship God the how we want, but we should worship but God the way why, how why he wants. Why would God need me to worship him? Good question. Good question. Very good question. God does not need your worship. God does not need your worship. However, it benefits us. Because if we follow the guidance that the Creator given us, it only benefits us, it doesn't benefit Him. For example, if you're sick, who do you go to? Um, it depends what kind of sickness, but I would assume the answer you're looking for a is doctor. a doctor. Yeah. Doctor, right? Why would you go to a doctor? You go to a doctor because he has the knowledge how to treat your sickness, right? Even if the doctor has given you a prescription, does that benefit him or does that benefit you? So when the doctor gives you prescription yeah. and you follow the guidance, does it benefit him or does it benefit you? Uh, I would say it benefits both, but mainly me because I'm sick, but him because it's his job and he gets paid. Okay, so, but either way, irrespective of whether you follow his prescription or not, he gets paid anyway. It's up okay, to you okay. now. Oh, okay. Yeah? So, yeah? so it benefits you, it doesn't benefit him. Yeah. Because either way, he's going to get paid. Yeah. If we don't follow his prescription, it's up to you. So similarly, God doesn't need our worship. However, from our psychological state, from our human psychology, we should uh, we look up to someone. Yeah. So uh, Correct? how would you say uh, your faith in Islam affected your life? It affect, good question. It affects my life. Why? Because Islam. No, but I, I would, yeah. As, yeah. No, because Islam. Or... Good. Because Islam is a complete way of life. Islam shows me a way how to lead my life. For example, Islam came with five objectives. Islam came here to preserve religion. Yeah. The freedom to practice your religion and to give you purpose in life. Almighty God gives us purpose. Yeah, that to worship Him alone. Yeah. And that benefits me. Doesn't benefit the Creator, benefits me. The, the, the Islam also came to preserve wealth. And that's the reason why Islam prohibits interest, usury. Why? Because interest, based economy, interest, usury, only benefits the rich people and makes the poor, poor person poorer. So Islam came here to prevent anything that affects your wealth. Islam also prohibits gambling. Because how many... Interest can also benefit the poor. Now, give me one example. Um, how do you think, how do you think these third world uh, developing countries, like Africa and Asia, why are they in such a state? There's a lot of reasons. I wouldn't say that it's simply because of interest. I think it's a, no, it's, a simple, you know what? simple explanation. No, because I, would the say, I would say, yeah. uh, you're asking me for an example of uh, how interest can benefit the poor person. Interest there's, never benefits the poor person. How? The fact, uh, that, the fact that I take, I take a loan out, I take a mortgage there's out. examples in uh, yeah. uh, developing countries, if people who don't have the the uh, means to buy something, like to develop their own business. Do you know what interest means? It what means is interest? That, sorry? What does interest mean? Interest means yeah. uh, it's a percentage on the amount of a loan that you take that you need to repay back to the person who loaned you the money. Correct. So what's the benefit of that? 
I don't see the benefit because what you're doing is you you are you are making money from borrowing another money. Can I? Uh, yeah. Interest doesn't. Complete, can I complete my argument? Yes. Yeah, sure. Okay. Sure. Uh, there's this thing, um, Estelle Duflo and uh, Banerjee, I think, uh, two economists wrote about this. They, there's a thing which is called a poverty trap. Okay. Which means that uh, if your all your uh, revenue is devoted to your survival, there's no way for you from you for you to escape poverty. And one way to do that. Uh, can be to uh, well, look, it's it's not their point, but their their point was about poverty trap. Mm -hmm. uh, there's this other uh, Nobel Prize. I think he, his name was Yunus. Uh, okay. Uh, Nobel Prize uh, uh, for peace. Uh, who developed in India a system in which um, people could take a small loan to develop their business, and if your business develops more than the interest you need to pay, you enrich yourself. And it's a way for people to uh, develop means, uh, a small business, so they can improve their, their life and they can escape this, this poverty trap. So, so that, that would be one example in which case uh, interest would be beneficial. But how, how, why would you restrict poverty to just third world countries? Sorry. What? Why would you only Why would you only restrict poverty to a third world country? Why would you restrict poverty is not restricted to third world countries? Right. So poverty can also uh, be for rich people. I tell you why, because when a person uh, takes loans out, they become bankrupt. They're poor. That's poverty. That poverty when, doesn't only mean you know. No, no. Uh, when you say when I take a loan, I'm poor. That that's a... even a rich person gets affected. Even a rich person. A rich person takes, uh, you know, uh, takes, you know, certain. Uh, a rich person uh, takes loans out, and yeah. they're always in debt. They go through bankruptcy. They have but to keep paying. But, that's that's also another form of but, poverty. But rich people don't, by definition, are but, not poor. But why do rich people become bankrupt? Why do they get bankrupt? Because of interest. Um, and that's why well, interest I, is poisonous. I, I think. No, I, I don't think. I think he. Yeah. Uh, why people interest? People? Do you know what interest means? Interest basically means yeah. you are making money from borrowing from uh, uh, yeah. from from borrowing other people's money. Yeah. So you're stealing. That's st that you're stealing people's money. You're you're no, you're that's you're not, targeting that's, vulnerable that's, that's people. That's not that's not the the uh, idea of interest. So what's the difference between profit and interest? Do you or do you think profit is is the same as interest? No, it's not the same. Okay, so do you not think trade profit, tr trade profits, is a better form, uh, a, a better uh, economical system than interest? Because profit means uh, revenue minus costs, well, right? And that's the profits. Interest is not like that. You know what interest means? Interest means my money. I'm borrowing money from someone else's without their permission. So, so um, interest basically means if I give you money, yeah. if I give you money, right? This money that I'm giving to you is not my money in the first place. I'm getting from someone else's money. I'm using someone else's money. Depends. Yeah, but that's circulating. So it's, so so what I'm what I'm trying to say to you is this: If I give you money as a loan, yeah, right. Now because I've given you money, now you're gonna put interest rate. Now you're yeah. gonna put interest. Yeah. But interest is so extortionate that I can become bankrupt. Well, it depends if it's. Uh... 2% interest you won't become bankrupt. Yeah, but 2 yeah, but that's recurring all the time. Yeah, but usually you repay the loan and You're always good. you're always going to be in debt. Because no, the interest I'm, no, I'm, I'm not in debt. No, 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 no. Interest is designed for a person to be in debt. Not not really. It's to no, it's not. Okay. I use I use my credit card all the time and I'm not in debt. No, I, you are in debt. I what? But you I, are in debt. I, but I if I pay You still repaying them. Yeah. Yeah, so that's that. No. I, I think I think you misconstrue the the uh, uh, like if I you if if I use my credit card yeah it's uh, much more convenient than me going to the bank taking out my money yeah giving it to the merchant then instead of I use my cards yeah. the, the Visa Mastercard whatever yeah 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 get, 
send the money to the merchant, yeah. and at the end of the month, I take money from the, my bank account, yeah. I give it to Visa, yeah. and then... Yeah, but you're, you're always in debt. That's the cycle. You're in a vicious cycle. No, but... I, you I are. Just, no, you're, no, no, no. You're, 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 no, no, listen, listen no, to this one. No, no, no. The interest is designed to be in debt. No, but it's a vicious if, cycle. If, if I repay at the end of end month, so I when never I, uh, give so when, one cent so of when, interest. So when would you ever stop repaying? Sorry? When would you ever stop repaying? Well, I'll, well, you, you're, you're making a really... No, no, see, see, do you see the reason? No, no, but, uh, well, do you well, see? Well, okay, that, that, do you see? That, like, we can make, like, uh, when will... I'll stop repaying the credit card companies when I'll die because the, the, the fact is I'll still need to eat food, I'll still need to uh, pay my uh, telephone, pay for, like, I pay my bills with... But you're still in debt. You're always going to be in debt. You'll, you'll never be able to repay it. That's the reason no, why it, I repaid each month. I know, but what I'm saying is yeah. you will never be able to stop repaying because you're in that cycle. Well, but what's and that's the reason. And that's the reason why. What's forget, the, what's, forget. What's, what's, what's the difference? What's yeah. the difference between yeah. me taking my my money, yeah. taking out, taking it out of uh, yeah. my bank account, yeah. giving it to the merchant, and he gives me the stuff instead of me using? No, a no, no. Card. That's that, that's consumerism. That's consumerism. That's business to business transaction. But no, what I'm, I'm, not, I'm not a business, but I'm what an you're individual. No, but you're taking a loan out from the bank. That's different. No, that's not taking a loan from a... It's you are. If you're taking a loan from the bank, but you're I, always going to have to repay we're, them. We're, ta we're talking about using a credit card now. I know, credit card. Yeah. So, 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 my, so my question to you is this. Yeah. You say that you, you always have to keep repaying, correct? I, I repay so I don't have to pay interest to the credit card company. No, but you, either way, you still have to repay all the time. Well, so but it's, it's like I'm saying, it's the same thing as me taking money out of my bank account and giving it to the merchant instead of it's the credit card company who's, who uh, forwards me the money so I can pay the person yeah. and I just take it the money from my bank account and pay the credit card company. And no, no, no. What you're, no, no. What you're explaining to me is the, is, is the process. I'm not yeah. asking about the process. Yeah. What I'm asking you... Either way, but do you still there's, have but what I'm saying is that there's no issue in me having a credit. Why does bankruptcy debt? happen? Uh, there's many reasons, but Why? usually, usually it happens because people have more spending than they have revenue. Okay, and, and more spending than revenue. Yeah. And okay. You, so what's say, the chances? Okay, if we get rid of the interest out, can they ever be bankrupt? Think about it. Because the interest, so. because in so. it's, it's possible to be bankrupt with, without how? Well, if how? I if I earn ten thousand dollars a year, no. and I spend you, in, interest is based on inflation. Uh, it's based well, on upon inflation. It's uh, well, uh, at, at, at an extortionate rate that it's beyond your ability to even repay. So no. what? So what I'm saying to you uh, is this: I, I in think, yeah, uh, interest yeah. is interest is not a good thing. It's not good. Interest, would, interest, on, you, you, interest only benefits the bankers. No, you know what? You no, know, I think you got it. Do you know why recession wrong. happened? Uh, why, why, why did recession happen? Oh, okay. We can have this conversation. Now. Yeah. Okay, great. Because um, I, because it's why I'm, I'm giving alternative option. Okay. Why can't our recessions happen? Uh, Do you know why recession happened? Because the banks, the banks, gave uh, incentive to consumers to take loans out from the bank, right? And what happened is they gave them a house and everything, right? Over a period of time, the bank doesn't have the money anymore because they spent somewhere else. No. That's that's why recession happened. The credit crunch. That money's gone now. It's 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 gone. It's gone somewhere. That's the reason why interest. So you're in recessions happen because of what? Interest happen. Recession happened yeah. because the banks can no longer give loans to the consumers because that money's gone. Gone where? What? They spend it elsewhere because it only benefits no, the bankers. I think, I think you you. Also, it's a, it's a thing, and uh, also consumers well, no, they got I trapped think, okay, because if, consu if, if consumers got tr got no, trapped. I think I think you got it wrong. I think okay. uh, um, you you think that the money disappears about somewhere. You know how money creation works. That's the reason why inflation happens. Yeah, because you're able to print money, print paper. Well, but I think uh, but there's no usually value. economists agree that inflation is a good thing. Okay. If, for example, I give you a hypothetical, like, I give you a hypothetical example, right? This, t the, uh, for example, this ten pound note. Yeah. If I have ten people, uh, each of them, how much? Sorry. How much do we get if there's ten people, and we only print ten pounds? How much do we get each? What's the what's the currency What's the currency value? If I have ten pounds, and from that ten pounds, you have ten people to share. How much each? 
do well, we get it depends. One, one can get 10, 10 equal, pounds equal, and equal, equal one, 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 pound. one pound. One pound. Yeah. Now, if I print more, if I print 20 pounds yeah. from 10 people. Yeah, I know we're inflated. Well, right. I think, I think so. Doesn't the current so doesn't the does doesn't the uh, doesn't the currency value decrease? Yeah, but how is that a problem? Because the inflation goes up, yeah. but the currency value decreases. Yeah. It becomes weak. What do you mean? I, I because because all, because, because like if you look yeah. uh, at all, you, well, what's what's your point? My point inflation? is my point is inflation tr takes place because they're able to print more money oh, okay. more paper money okay. however if you go buy gold and silver coin yeah. first of all there's, oh, there's scarcity you, you, want, you want to get back to the gold standard that that's your point well that's the most ideal way why because oh, there's that's, that's, yeah oh, because it's but why why okay, because no. there's scarcity there's scarcity in resources no, it's it's like, there is oh uh, are you um well like in theological <laughs> Arguments on ideally right. speaking, ideally speaking, I'll, 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 yeah. I can we can have this economic argument because yeah. uh, I teach. Economics. Okay, I'll give you one. I teach, I teach economics. Okay, so no problem. Oh, spend, brilliant, can, brilliant. Can, okay, I'll spend. give you one example. Yeah, okay, we can have like historical. Uh, like, there, there's yeah. not one country who has. Uh, do you, do you, do you believe poverty is wrong? Uh, you're asking me like. Uh, I believe poverty is wrong. Yeah, I would. I would say. Okay. So you give me a solution. How do we encounter poverty? Because I've got the solution. I'll tell you later. But to what? You, I've got the solution but to poverty. You're bringing a, another conversation. No, we're I can. Talking, we're talking about inflation. I know. So I'm. So I'm so asking you from from your economic model. You give me. How does it overcome poverty? How do you eradicate but, poverty from your economic it, model? Inflation and poverty are two different questions. Right. No, no, no. Inflation is part of the economy. But what I'm asking you, how, because the end goal is to eradicate poverty, correct? So how does your economic model eradicate poverty? What's my economic model? What, what are you talking What's about? What's your, do you, because, so, because, so, you, so you support interest? Uh, so how I does would it, say, I would say, um, yeah. generally, interest uh, is beneficial to an economy. Yeah. No, uh, yeah, interest, okay. But how does interest eradicate poverty? But it's not the it's not the function of interest to add. So what's eradicate. the end goal of interest? What's the what's the purpose of interest? Interest is a way for people to get money they don't have now, so they can make purchases. Yeah. What they wouldn't be able to do. Good. And on that, based upon that interest-based economy. Yeah. Did that benefit? But the it's not it's not interest. Like, if you're you're taking a part of the system which is the interest yeah yeah but i wouldn't say it's the foundation of the of yeah, but, our uh, yeah, but, yeah but yeah but the end goal of both of us is we don't want poverty correct we don't want to see I, I wouldn't say i wouldn't say the end goal is to eliminate poverty i wouldn't say it's the, no, no, to, the all right to reduce poverty i would say yeah say. it's it's How something uh one of uh the goals of an economic system would try to, but yeah. there, I think there's other. You do know there are other stakeholders. Important. Sorry. You do know there are other stakeholders. Uh, yeah, it, it, I would say it's economic, not only, it's not, economic development also is yeah, important. So, so we're not only talking about bankers. We're not only talking about consumers. We're talking about society generally. Yeah. Okay. So how does interest benefit the society generally? Our interest, well, like I, I just said, it allows people to buy things that they don't have the money right now. Yeah. So, like, let's say. I'm a company. Okay. I'm, I've got this. I'm, I'm an inventor. I've got this brilliant right. idea. I don't have yeah, the right the here. money to create a uh, factory. Yeah. Yeah. So what do I do? I go to the bank. They give me money. But yeah. why would they give me money? Like I'm I'm a like because not, they want to make they want to make money. No, off but you. yo, but <laughs> no. Why would they give me it's money? Amazing. It's because uh, uh, like they they don't know me. They but don't they can, can they possess your assets? Yeah, they, 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 there's yeah. collateral. So, 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 do you know? So, it's a facade. So, you feel like you own, you own something, but, but actually, in but, reality, okay, you don't let, own. Let's say I have this brilliant idea. So, yeah. I make my, I borrow them the money. They trust me. Yeah. So, I build my fantastic. But, but factory. But they can take your company. But they can take your company away. They can take your factory away. No, there's they contracts. They contracts. I know. I know this contract. But, but ideally yeah. speaking, they can use. They can. They can threaten no, you. No, if. They can. No, if if I repay my loan, the contract ah, so there's on? a condition. So so ca so yeah, if you're not able to repay, what would happen? It's always contractual. Well, like if you're not able to repay, what would happen to your factory? It will get seized. It will be seized by who? Uh, I would assume I, I'm not that familiar with uh, 
the uh, legal system. It gets liquidated, correct? You yeah, go for liquidation. Assume, yeah, so someone else, uh, someone else takes takes over your factory. Yeah. Yeah. So in reality, you never own. You don't actually own the factory. It's just well, a. It's just well, a. Uh, what do you wait, call it? Wait, it's wait, a. Wait, 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 it's if, a glitch. Let, let's let's say I take a ten-year loan with the bank. Yeah. Yeah. Let's say four percent interest. Four percent interest. Let's yeah, say. Yeah. Uh, I build my fantastic factory. Yeah. I sell my products. Yeah. Everybody loves it. Yeah. I make a lot of money from, let's say, uh, uh -huh. my one million or hundred hundred yeah. million factory yeah. uh, produce, let's say, uh, ten million a year. Okay. So I may be all hypothetical. I'm, I'm, it's all hypothetical. There's no guarantee. Because no, I will, okay, because like, I, because I will, you, you understand that. I understand, that, that's but how I will. Business work. Like, it's, it's an example, yeah. like to, to show you yeah. how uh, I can yeah. one day, like the, it's not the bank that owns my. my yeah, they my do bank. actually. Yeah, at, the, at, at first, oh. but let, okay, let, let let me finish. I like, know, I know. I I pay my four four percent interest. Yeah. I pay, I pay, I pay. After ten years, I don't owe the bank nothing. I yeah. own my factory. Yeah. So, I'm now the owner of the company. Yeah. And I've made money in the process. I can majority. All right. So my yeah. question to you. Good. 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 I agree so, with everything you said. Can majority of people uh, able to repay back fully? Sorry. Can can majority of people able to repay fully? That's what happens with, in the within their lifetime. What within their lifetime are they able to pay back to the bank fully? That's what most loans. That's what happens. Now I'm asking you, on realistically speaking, yeah. can anyone able to repay the bank? Within their lifetime, yes, that's what happens. Really? Like every so why? day, like I've right. taken. So like, why? So why? When like I said, right. every month I take a, I take loans from. No, no, no you're not. So sorry, you're not, sorry. Let me. Bought, bought no, no, no. Sorry, sorry. No, no, no. I, no, no, no. I understand what you're coming from, but I'm yeah. saying, what's the guarantee There's that a that a person would be able to repay fully within their lifetime? There's no guarantee. Right. So, the, so this is what I'm saying. So, what's the consequence? The consequence is they're going to seize your assets, you're going to go through liquidation, you become homeless, you become bankrupt. No, but, no, no That's okay, it. I think you, you're mistaken. I'm not. If, like, like the, there's this invention also that happens, which is called a company, which means limited liability. Okay, how, how, many people, how, many people can, how many people can confidently pay mortgage fully? Like a great majority of people are able great to. Great majority? Yes, indeed. I, I, no, no, I'm I saying think, fully. Fully in their lifetime. Really? Uh, there are the, many, the, many people. There are many, many people yeah. that are still repaying mortgage for 50 years, 60 years, because the interest rate is so extortionate. No, it's not how it is. Not because how mortgages, because mortgages, how do they, how they work? Is that yeah. you've got? Uh, I'm not sure how it works in the UK, but yeah, uh, you've got 25 years to repay it. You can always you like. Uh, well, you, you, you can have like different maturity for your yeah. mortgage. Yeah. But um, after 25 years, let's say you don't remortgage your your mortgage. Yeah. After 25 years. So what would happen if you die within 25 years? What's going to happen to that property? Uh, well, who else? So you, someone else okay, has to pay well, for you. Say, no, no, no. Well, <laughs> let, uh, let's say, let's say. Well, usually properties, uh, something we've experienced in the uh, uh, Western world. Is that properties prices have appreciated? Uh, but let's say, let's say. It's no, it's based on uh, it's based upon inflation. Let, let's the property say prices can go up and down all the time. What? But the, the, the property prices can always go up and down. It's not stable. It's not stagnant. Um, yeah, there's always this idea that there yeah. could be bubbles. So my, are, so my, but, but usually property yeah. prices tend to go yeah. uh, to increase sometimes. Yeah. Okay. yeah. So by but, but yeah. The, the, yeah, my point is, um, what happens? Let's let's say that the Let's take out the property, just uh, keep the same price. Uh, let's say uh, 200,000 uh, 200, pounds. Yeah, yeah, okay? yeah. Uh, I take a mortgage of 200,000 pounds. Okay. And then I, after, let's say it's 25 years, after, let's say, 15 years, I die. Let's say I repaid maybe half of it. Okay. So after it is, I die, let's say I have children, my children. But is it the same value? Is the money that the money that you per the money that you you bought for the house 25 years ago, let's say on 250,000 pounds, for example, right? Will it will it be the same value as today? Repeat that. So so you bought a house, okay, well, bought a house. Okay, property. you want to put inflation into it? Okay. Yeah, of course. So, okay, that's that's if, the whole reason if, why interest happens. Inflation. 
No, you, the more no, you print no, money, no, 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 the more no, you no. print money. No, no, hang on, hang on. The more yeah. you print money, inflation happens. That's the reason why. Yeah, but paper money. Like you, if, you if, print as much okay. money you want. The bank can print money as much as you want. You're, you're aware that uh, the having inflation is like having too high inflation is bad, like we're experiencing now. But having, uh, which, which, which is called deflation, is bad also. Like the the money system. I, I'm saying I'm saying the Islamic economic model has no deflation or inflation. It does. It doesn't. Because we because because if, from Islamic if, if, from from okay. the Islamic model okay. we go by gold and silver, okay. well, which is valuable. Well, paper you, money has no value. Okay, <laughs> okay, uh, we agree that money uh, as a, is a is a convention. But if your money is gold and silver, and yeah. you've got economic development, your 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 produces you produces more goods and services each year. Yeah, your money you've got have deflation. Yeah, you have a certain amount of money. You're producing more goods. Deflation will uh, no no will not sitting. deflation no 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 supply and demand, but not not inflation yeah. deflation. No so one can supply. exactly no one can inflation. because the reason why because gold and no, silver I, I, go, okay. gold and diamonds are scarcity in value. If there's scarcity if, if there's scarcity in resource, yeah. then there's a high value. Uh, but with paper money, there's no scarcity. You can print as much as you want. Which is a good thing. No, which is why there's more inflation and and the currency is weak. Well, you, you, you've got you've got it wrong. You, you don't care. Do you know how paper? Do you know how paper money started? I know. I, I've looked into it. Do you know how paper money started? Uh, how it started? Uh, there's. I know. Just uh, I yeah, a couple minutes. I think I've, I've read the book uh, from David Graeber about yeah. which is called Debt. Uh, it's been a few years, so the paper uh, money was used as a certificate for the banks to entrust the gold and silver. It was, a, it was a certificate. Oh, no, no. Th thank you. you that was? Th yeah. Uh, it was, uh, you say, that the reason why bank comes from the term, the Italian term banco, because transactions were made on a bench. Yeah. And that, that's so if I want, yeah, yeah, good. The, good, the, good, the, yeah. the it <coughs> came act, I think. So if I want to store, if I want to store gold and silver, then in return, I get a paper certificate. Yeah. And that's the paper money that we're using today. But now somebody floated the currency, an American person, I forgot, they yeah, they flow to this economy, right? Yeah. Now, do you know what countries can do? Countries can switch the the, the currency for four hours and increase and decrease. Uh, can inflate to deflate? Yes. Do you know that happened in India? You know what the Americans did? They for four hours they switched. They they switched off the uh, the inflation. No, sorry, they switched off the currency, American dollars. By switching off, everything's increased. Inflation happened. Do you know what that shows you? That shows you that the governments have power. They can they can determine inflation, deflation. They can do whatever they want. Well, They're the one who's are, controlling, are, are not you, us. Are, are you aware that uh, uh, um, there's this institution which is called the central bank? Yeah, in central each bank, federal. Yeah, federal federal reserves. Yeah. Well, that's for the U.S. In, yeah. in U.K., you've got the UK. Bank of England, got, yeah. Uh, yeah. which is an institution who uh, regulate the uh, financial system yeah. or the, the money creation. Uh, the, the yeah, but they can print. They can print money. Yeah, but are, they can. Are, are you they, aware that they, these people are uh, generally try to be that's responsible why the, that's and what, try to steer yeah. the, the economy in but, the yeah, good. let's say right direction? That's why bankers are known for and, being greedy. Okay. Oh, why? That's why banks are known for for being greedy because they're controlling. They're controlling where the money circulated. They're controlling how many paper money should be produced. They're the one who's controlling yeah, inflation, we, we, so we, we have can, no control. We, we, can, we can have arguments about uh, yeah. the uh, social functions of banks, uh, yeah. but... Do you know what's the Islamic okay, model? Okay, Do you know okay, what's the Islamic model? Okay, okay. The Islamic model is based on profit and loss sharing. But, Musharika. Okay. Musharika. Profit and loss sharing. So that means if I'm in a business with you, yeah. right? If we are in a loss, we, both of us are in a loss. If, I'm in a pro if, if we're making a profit, we're both going to get profit. Yeah. However, interest is designed to have uh, to, for one party to have a, to gain upper hand at yeah. the expense of someone. So, for example, you, yeah. for example, a bank loans you two hundred thousand pounds. For example, right, whether you can repay or not, they have the upper hand. They have the upper hand. So you you've actually been you're actually at the lower hand. They're on the upper hand. They can take your assets anytime. Okay. So, anytime. Okay. So what what precludes me from? Uh uh, You're at a disadvantaged position because the, now the banks say, "Look, we loaned you two hundred fifty thousand pounds. If you can't pay back the loan, okay. we take your house." Okay, so, what, <laughs> so, and, and so whereas a profit or loss sharing, if my partner, if my business partner, for example, if I purchase a house, 
with the with the Islamic uh, bank, right? We all share. Mm -hmm. So if the bank, if, if they make, if I make a loss, they make a loss. Mm -hmm. If I make a profit, they make a profit. And so like, whereas that, what, what precludes me from uh, yeah. stealing the money and spending it? No, I didn't say about stealing. I'm no. saying I'm saying that the bank yeah. loaned you two hundred fifty thousand pounds, irrespective of whether you are able to repay them or not. They have the power. Why? They can take your assets. In, in, let's say in the Islamic system, what, what precludes me from uh, stealing the money? From buying a Ferrari or... No, no, no. Uh, so we believe in the profit and loss sharing, meaning that if we enter into a business yeah. or I want to uh, you know, uh, purchase a property uh, with, with an Islamic uh, institution, right? They, uh, they buy the house on my behalf, but they get like, for example, they get 80%. So if I pay back the 80% with no interest, I get the full ownership. If I pay back what? So there's no there's no interest. So for example, I pay back what? Let's say I, yeah. I, I buy a house. Yeah. What do I repay the bank, the, the owner or whatever? Yeah. It's, so it's, I, so it's, uh, so I pay on the installments. Yeah. Right? So for example, they I have 20% of the share. The Islamic 20% of the house. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. The 80% of the share belongs to um, the uh, the Islamic institution, right? Over a period of ten years, all I need to do just pay installments, and then eventually I get hundred percent ownership. Okay. So Whereas the bank, on the other hand, yeah. so so if I make a loss, how, how, how does the bank make money? Good, good. So the difference is when it comes to Islamic model, Islamic institution, even though they have eighty percent of the share of the house, if I make a loss, they're also in a loss. Whereas in your what, system, what, what do you mean they? Because they, they right. because they also own some, uh, some of the house. They get they share some of the house, so they they also get involved in the loss. What do you mean a loss? Okay, mean it. So if, if I, the, the yeah. value of the, the house decreases? No, no, no. If if I buy if I if I purchase if I uh, want to buy a house, there is a, for example, I only have twenty percent of the share of the house. The Islamic institution has 80%. If I'm not able to repay, they're also in a loss because they don't own 100%. Whereas you, on the other hand, if the bank gives you the, the, the conventional banking I'm talking about, if they loan you... What do you mean they're in a loss? I'm not, not getting... Meaning that if I can't pay, then I can't pay. They get, they're, in, they're in detriment. Because they... Well, the, if, if I can't pay, they yeah. simply they don't yeah, get repaid. They get, yeah, they get detriment as well because I'm not paying them back. Well, I'm not able to pay them out. So they can't liquidate me. They can't take my assets off because they don't own the house in the first place. They so only own 80%. Say, well, what, what uh, prohibits me from simply uh, taking it to 20%? I give them 20% of the house. Yeah, so you pay and, installments and, and then slowly and, and when no, you... No, no, yeah. Wait, yeah. Let's say, and they keep 80%, why should I pay them back? No, 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 because, because they have a, a share. They, they are having eighty percent. Yeah. So so but when I, I pay, I don't so when so when I pay, so when I pay, when I pay fully, I get the full ownership. Yeah, but if I and, and if I'm not able to pay, if I'm not able to pay, yeah. they're also in a loss. Why? Because they don't own hundred yeah, percent of the what, house what, in the first place. So so why should I repay the bank if I just if that's not the issue. The issue is they that in a conventional banking, if you take a loan from the bank, they they pay the house free, fully. On your behalf. Yeah. So in reality, even though on paper you own the house, but on paper they have full ownership because they paid the house on your behalf. Yeah, but so my, so, so, my, so my question my yeah. question to, yeah. to the Islamic system is yeah. if I give twenty percent of the price of the house, why would I want to repay the eighty percent the rest Because of I don't own hundred percent. And neither and neither and neither and neither does the Islamic institution own hundred percent of the property as well. So, so if uh, I, if I can't repay, they get they get the hit as well. So they get what? They get the hit. They're yeah. also in a loss because I can't pay back. Yeah, Whereas in your conventional no, banking, no, okay, even uh, sorry, sorry, okay, sorry, okay. wait, 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 wait. I understand. I understand. Sorry. I understand. Whereas in, in your conventional banking, they have the full ownership of the house. They I understand. Pay. I understand yeah. the thing. Okay. Yeah, what I'm good. what I'm trying to get is yeah. why should if I get. And I go to the Islamic bank. Yeah. They buy 80% of my house. I buy 20%. I go live into that that house. I'm very happy. And uh, yeah, yeah. Why would I want to repay them back? Because they have some share. Because the Islamic institution has 80% of the share. But if I repay, if I because they give it because they because I got the I got the money from them. 
and then what? Yeah, so if I if I if I pay in installments to the Islamic institution, okay, but it, uh, wait, 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 one yeah, second. Sorry. If I pay if I pay back the Islamic institution, I get hundred percent of the ownership. Yeah. You understand? Yeah. So they because they have some of the share, whereas on your hand No, I understand. Okay, yeah. so keep 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 yeah. the other system. Yeah, fine. Okay. What I'm trying to understand yeah. is why if I get twenty percent of the do, will they kick me out of the house? No. So no, why because I have twenty percent of the share. So why would they? Would I ever want to repay the Islamic bank? Because I want one hundred percent ownership. Why is that? Because, because I mean, yeah. because I mean, because it's a contract. I mean, I'm sharing the property with the Islamic institution. On your, on your no, other hand, no. the conventional banking has one hundred percent full ownership of your house. I understand that. So but they can do whatever they want. Not really. Yes. No, they, they can't. If you can't repay back to them, if I can't, but if I right, if, even yeah. if I can't. Do you know what happened? But, but, do you know? Okay. They, do you know what happened? I can, I can, I can sell my share, and I can buy another house. Twenty-five percent. I can, I can go somewhere. Whereas you, on the other hand, you're trapped. No, but, you're trapped. Yes. I, you I, you're, you're trapped. Because, well, <laughs> because not, the, not necessarily like because, the, because the conventional banking, you're not in a share with them. You're not sharing the property with them. You, no. They, you're not. You're not. You're not in a. Con you're in a contract with them in the sense that they loaned you two hundred fifty thousand pounds in return for what? For interest, yeah. Right, okay. For property, but, right? But but, okay, but but do they do they have hundred percent of the my, property, my question, of the ownership? My question is, <laughs> okay, why, if I go to an Islamic bank, yes. why would I want to, to own hundred percent? I'm not. They can't, if they can't. Give no, me no, 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 no. Because I'm I, I'm having a share with them. I have shares with them. I only have twenty percent of the ownership. If they I have can, well, they have eighty percent. If I. If I yeah, if they have 80%, I have 20%, they yeah. have the right to live there and they can't I kick me out. No, they can't because I'm, I've got 20% of the share anyway. So it, why <laughs> would I want to repay them? That's my question. Because I want full ownership of the house eventually. Why? 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 Because, that's I, because that's the contract. Yeah. I want the full, because I, I want, I, I want, I, I, because I, I want the full ownership of the house. Because I want full ownership of the house eventually. Yeah. Why? Because why? Because, I, because it's I contract, enter. because I want to get the asset. Yes. Why is that? Because I want the asset because it's valuable. I can, I can, I, I can sell the house. I can do whatever I want. It's, it's right. more valuable for me. So what? Okay, can you? Can, all right, all right. Hang on. Yeah. Let's let's go by your your economic model, right? The conventional banking they gave you two hundred fifty thousand pounds. Wait, 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 wait. One okay, second. Sorry. If you wanna, can, are you able to sell your house? Sorry. Are yes. you able to sell your house? If you can't repay them, are yeah. you able to sell your house? Yeah. There, there there's always. No, he can't. The bank has to. The bank has to find someone. The Not bank you. has the ownership. You don't. You don't. Oh, you mean? Yes. Uh, let's say I re no. Am I actually, right? Actually, actually, yeah. I, uh, no. If if I can't repay the uh, the bank, I'm able to sell the house, repay the the. You still have to repay either way. Well, even I if you, even even if you go to another property, you still have to pay for your previous property, because you always have to repay. You have no ownership in the first place. Nothing. Only by paper you're the owner, but in reality, the banks have the ownership of your house. But and that's the reason why interest, interest is nothing but designed to favor the bankers, to favor the rich people. And what's happened to the poor people like us? We become victim, we commit suicide, we become bankrupt. Look at the Islamic system. We have a profit and loss sharing. I'm in the share with you. If I, if I can't repay back, you also have but, a hit. But my question, my question is, as the profit and uh, share, sharing, whatever, yeah. I don't understand. Because why? I have 20% of the ownership. Yeah, That's the contract. The, you, by your contract, you don't have any ownership of the house. You have no share of the yeah, house. Yeah. I, I understand that this, the point you, you yeah. just made. What I'm asking is, the system that you're, well, the Islamic system, yeah. doesn't seem to work to me. Uh, what, do you know why? Do you know why we're in a win-win situation? Because if I'm able to repay back, they get the money, yeah, and I get the full ownership. They make their profit; they can move on. You, on the other they hand, don't make any profit if I if there is no interest. Of course, because I'm paying back. Sorry, they they, they have they have eighty percent of the so ownership. They, they're only so it, taking a risk of not getting paid. Right. Back so you? that means that, so that means me as an individual, if I have twenty percent of the ownership of the property, all I need to do is repay is to regain 100% of the ownership that's it so in that way they're making profit from another from another business which, right so if I have 20% of ownership yeah. of the house the same property 
the Islamic institution, they own 80%, 80% of the same property. Yeah. All I need to do is regain 100% share, Why would I 100% want ownership, because then I can sell and buy whatever I want, because I have 100% full ownership. That's become my asset. Yeah, yeah. So, so the Islamic institution, if, if first of all, no, if first, there's no inflation in the system, there will, yeah, there's, there's conditions. Yeah, yeah. So, so there's conditions. Get the full share. Yeah. It's called musharika. Musharika means profit and loss sharing. Yeah, but my question so is. The, so, so the Islamic institution, they get, they get, they get profit from another, uh, from another property. How because the they, system. How do they make profit? Because they, they also they in a, because they also in a share with another property. So they, they get profits elsewhere. How? Because they also end because it's not just me. They have profit and loss. But they have, uh, they have, uh, they share a property yeah, with another consumer. Profit, there may be loss. But, but they may be profit. They may be loss because it becomes profit. a business. Banking is is not a business. Banking they feed, they're feeding off from you. They're feeding off from you. For yeah, them, they're, 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 they're making money off borrowing of them borrowing you. Of, or exactly. State banking is not a profit-oriented organization. It's my profit and loss. It's profit and loss. Whereas conventional banking, the mortgage bank that we're going by today, yeah, the conventional banking for them, you know what's their business? The business is, you know, let's make money off uh, someone who we loan. Yeah, but that's their business. No, that's that. that, that you're, you're you're not making profit. You're you're making money off the of of people who they borrowed money from. And that's not business. That's sucking people's life out. And that's deceive. It's a deception. It's not a business. A business, do you know what business mean? You make a profit, I make a profit. You make a loss, I'm in a loss. But how does your convention, conventional economic model works? Either way, if you're not able to repay, the bank can seize your asset. So where, where, where's the fairness in that? The what? The? Where's the fairness in that? The fairness. Okay. Yeah, where's the fairness? Either way, if you are irrespective of whether you repay, repay them or not, they still have 100% ownership. If you're not able to pay back, <laughs> you know what they're going to chuck you out. Mm. They're going to liquidate your assets and you're at a loss. But in Islamic system, we don't have that. So now you tell me which is the better economic model. The Musharika, which is the well, profit and loss okay. sharing, I've, I've, or your I've conventional got, I've got interest. A question. Which country adopts the uh, Islamic system? Yeah, it's a good, good question. There are some Islamic banks, uh, for example, you have Al Rayyan Bank. Um, but however, there's one caveat that comes in. There is no hundred percent that I know that that complies with Islam, with Islamic mm -hmm. principle of money. Yeah. So either way, it doesn't exist anymore. Like it does exist, but it's very hard to find one. Because why? Because as I told you, we're living in a global uh, interest-based economy. Mm -hmm. um, but there's hardly any Islamic it's banks. Yeah, prophecy. it's a prophecy. Yeah. So what happened is very hard for Muslims to, uh, to find a legit bank mm -hmm. because even in the Islamic bank, there's a catch to it. Mm -hmm. Do you understand? Like, because they're affected by interest in other ways. But I'm talking about in an in a, in a, in a Islamic society that if we were to implement the profit and loss sharing, then everyone is in a win-win situation. I don't see how. Because first of all, my, my, uh, first of all, I have the share of the property so there's no way that they can liquidate the property mm -hmm. because I pay, yeah? Yeah, I understand that. Yeah. So secondly, if I, uh, secondly, uh, if I'm able to repay uh, my 20% my ownership to 100%, I get full ownership of the property. I can do whatever I want. Mm -hmm. I can sell, I can, I can do whatever I want. I can rent, no problem. But you don't have that ability mm -hmm. because, because the conventional bankers, they have an upper hand over you. So even if you can't repay, either way, they'll take your assets. Because in the first place, that was never your property in the first place, only by paper. You're just living. You're just living in that house. But in reality, they have full ownership. You can study, study, you can study more about Islamic uh, economic model. I mean, it's very interesting. That, in fact, there's uh, many scholars, you know, you have Islamic finance. In fact, the Prophet, peace be upon him, this is why Islam is a complete way of life. Because Islam also tackles, you know, what constitutes interest, how should we deal with business transactions. There's ethical framework. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But you know, uh, yeah, I've got to end the discussion here. But you know, yeah. um, 
It's a pleasure meeting you. Yeah. And uh, what, what's your name again, sorry? Joel. 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 Yeah. Right, hard. Nice to meet you. If I, look, if I, if I came across uh, offensive, I apologise. It's not oh, my no, intention. No, it's not offensive. You're very cordial. and. Uh, you Thank were, you very much. And you too. Were, uh, you too. Yeah, I think, uh, yeah. I've seen other discussions where yeah. much more heated and uh, disrespectful. Oh, think, yeah, yeah. Uh, Absolutely. It, uh, thank you very much, Joel. Yeah, I really thank appreciate Thank you for taking your time out. Yeah, thank you. And, uh, you know, take some time out to read the Quran. Yeah. Think about the prophecies of Muhammad yeah. Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. You know, try and try and challenge yeah, I'll, the message. I'll read about the um, the Islamic Islamic uh, economic model. Yeah, yeah, no problem. You can okay. study, no problem. brother. If you're interested, you can study. That's it. Okay. Cool. Thank you much, Joe. So, uh, I'll be sure that. Uh, Salam alaikum. Oh, <laughs> wa alaikum assalam.